All right, welcome everybody. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one with nation under God, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, and Court, can you please do the roll call? Mayor Martin? Here. Trustee Ferrano? Here. Trustee Hughes? Absent. Trustee Ruggiero? Here. Trustee Here. Thank you. Now we have minutes to approve um, from June 17th. So they are in your binder. Um, let's see. We couldn't do that at the last meeting because um, we didn't have enough people that were here to vote on them that were present at that meeting. Okay. So are there any uh, corrections to be made to the minutes or anything to be added? No. Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to accept the minutes as sent? Motion. Second. And the second, is there any more discussion? All I'm in just, favor? Uh, mm -hmm. We'll just make sure they get posted to the website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's June 17th. So let's take a look at the minutes from the July 15th meeting. They're following the June 17th minutes. Oh, these were long. <laughs> okay. um, are there any corrections or additions to be made? Actually, I think Mrs. Lee's first name is L O T T. Oh, is it? Yeah. Am I right about that, Glenn? L O T T I E. Mrs. Lottie Lee. She's 101. So we'll correct that. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the minutes with that one correction? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Okay, for general fund, we have $76,980.95. Uh, in the water abstract is $17,102.14. The trust and agency is $7,578.75. Sewer abstract, $189,003.11. Capital sewer wastewater treatment expansion, 315, three, 315, $355,035. And capital water well field is $2,375. May I have a motion to accept the abstracts as read? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I'll pass these to Nick, please, for his signature. Okay. So I just want to make a few comments before we get started here tonight. Um, I'm going to um, do my comments in the beginning of the meeting. Uh, to... hmm? What one? Oh, okay. So these are for the July 30th meeting. 
and Nick wasn't present. So we needed him to be here for his signature. Okay, so I'll just read these into the minutes. Again, this is July 30th, 2024. The sewer abstract was $80,337.56. Water abstract, $82,810.19. Trust and agency is $1,158.75. General fund is $19,194.63. Uh, is there a motion to accept the abstracts from the July 30th, 2024 meeting? So moved. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, and Nick needs to sign that. Okay, great. Thank you. So let's see, under mayor's comments, I wanted to uh, let everybody know that the New York Blood Center is um, a relatively new facility. They're located right next door to the Red Line Diner, right on Route 9. Um, it's a beautiful state-of-the-art facility, and the director contacted me to let me know that there is a severe blood shortage, and to please encourage everybody to consider donating you can make an appointment or you could just walk in and donate. So um, just please consider that and spread the word. So I promised them that I would um, tell everybody about that. And just to tag on to that, the Beer Cafe and Beast are both included in that. Give a pint, get a pint. Oh, wow. So if you have to either more places and we'll look you up. There you go. Um, let's see. Oh, and I did have a couple of meetings with Sarah Brown, our planner of Hardesty and Hanover. And I wanted to thank Glenn, our police commissioner, and also Jenny, our um, planning and zoning secretary, for helping me to compile the data that we are getting uh, ready to apply for. This is for the Safe Streets grant. It's very exciting. We're very hopeful and optimistic about this. And Sarah is here with us tonight, and we will talk more about that later in the evening. Um, July 25th, we had a really nice um, pollinators program here at the Village Hall. Uh, it was a collaboration with the Blodgett Library, and this was for our 125th anniversary celebration. So it was a nice little program. Um, there was a bunch of families here, and I think that they all had a really good time. So um, I was able to stop by and see them, and, and everybody seemed really happy, and it was a really nice educational but fun program, and it was free. So, um, And also for the 125th anniversary celebration, we also had a, lo a local history lecture here on August 7th with Alex, who has been here before. He also plays the cello. He's a local historian. He did a lecture here for us at the Village Hall on antique um, bottles. So um, he has a bit of a following and he's a pretty interesting guy. So thank you, Alex, for that. Uh, I also wanted to give everyone an update on our rail trail study. So we are involved now and I don't like the name of the rail trail. I'm just gonna put that out there because it's the Beacon Hopewell. <laughs> rail trail. I think it should be named the Village of Fishco rail trail, but um, it's not. So where we're at with that study right now, we're they're currently reviewing the first draft of the existing conditions report. This is the Metro North train tracks that go right through the village here, um, through Glenham, you know, all the way up through to Hopewell. We're hopeful that we are going to be able to um, make them into a rail trail and connect with the other rail trails in the county when we do that. So this is where the inventory is assessed and the infrastructure and all of the environmental resources along the um, train tracks are studied. They also met with Central Hudson regarding their equipment along the train tracks, along the corridor. So the next step will be uh, the draft will be ready and it'll be sent to the advisory committee for re review and comment. Um, there was a study online that everyone was encouraged to do. And they also did pop-up events at different venues. They ha I know they were at the Beacon Farmer's Market and a couple other locations and just asking people to take the study. So it was kind of like the questions if you didn't do the study were like, 
Um, you know, do you want to have bathrooms along the trail? Like, do you think there should be, you know, playground equipment? Like it was just asking what people wanted to see and what would benefit, you know, our community. So that's where we're at there. So it's moving along. Um, August 8th, I met with a team from Dutchess County Tourism. Um, it was kind of a rainy day. <laughs> But we got out and we spoke to a lot of business owners in the village and it was really fun. It was the um, it was for the village official tourism outreach day. And I know Nick had um, met with the Dutchess County tourism people and did a little video. And I walked around with them and talked to some different um, owners of businesses. And they were letting everybody know about different educational opportunities that the um you know the county offers for businesses and um you know support you know that they can get their their message out to tourists and build tourism for our area so that was a great experience for that and you know for the village um let's see what else um on july 25th i intended a meeting with the county regarding ems I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but I included in your binders a handout of the um, what we are now known as Region 4. So um, this is from the county. This is the slides from the meeting I attended. So we'll go through that together in a little while, just so everybody knows everybody's up to speed with what's going on with ambulance, um, because that's been an ongoing concern for all of the municipalities here. And we all need to um, know about that. And let's see. Oh, well, I also met with a few volunteers from the Repair Cafe. Now, um, Raphael had come in, I don't know when it was, maybe a year or two ago, and spoke about the idea of having a Repair Cafe, which is a great concept and I'm very supportive of it. It's kind of like, if you don't know what it is, it's an event where people bring things that would otherwise end up in a landfill, like a lamp. Um, you know, it could be anything, a vacuum, like some broken piece of equipment, clothing, it could be a pocketbook, it could be anything. And there'd be a bunch of fixers there. And you could bring your lamp and get it fixed for free. And it's a great thing because it does help, you know, cut down on waste and, and um, keep things out of landfill. So um, we spoke about what we as the village could do to help them. And um, we were kind of brainstorming different ideas um, about how to help them get their message out. And they've already had one event in Beacon and it was very successful. I think they told me they had 108 people come in for the repair service. And, um, you know, I think that would be something great for the village too. So we'll continue to work with them. Also, I was asked to invite everybody to the preseason picnic for Total Football Hudson Valley. <laughs> they are our soccer team that um, use Sarah Taylor Park as their home field. Um, they're a great organization. And um, again, they had offered some nice clinics free of charge for children over the summer, which we thought was great and beneficial to the community. But their picnic, and they, they are wanting, you know, everybody to come if you're free, Sunday, September 1st, from 3 to 6 at Sarah Taylor Park. So we're happy to see them using our field. Um, also, I wanted to let everybody know we are going to have our annual 9-11 ceremony right here in front of Village Hall. We're going to meet at 8.30 a.m., on September 11th for a solemn remembrance service. So please keep that in mind if you're free, um, please join us. I also wanted to announce uh, September 21st is our yard sale from nine to four. There is a rain date, which would be the next day, the 22nd. So that information is all on the website. Um, already it's been up for a while and then also our bulk pickup is going to be the 28th this year so i know it's a little bit different this year but um as i've stated before royal carding asked us if they could switch things around a little bit this year because they have um not enough staffing so 
uh, the 28th of September will be the bulk pickup day. Okay, so <laughs> that's a lot of announcements. But now what we're going to do next is I'd like to call up Kristen McDonald, who is our court clerk. And we just wanted to thank you for your years of service. Thank you so much. And that is so <laughs> And we have a certificate. This certificate is proudly presented to Kristen McDonald, court clerk for the village of Mitchell for 30 years. Of unwavering dedication and commitment and support for the village of Michigan. With immense gratitude, we commend and congratulate you on your 30 years of service. <laughs> Three more to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And so now we have one more proclamation tonight. Um, and this is for Fishfield Tire and Auto Repair. So would you mind coming up? You guys are the best. <laughs> we all love you. Everybody <laughs> loves you. So I just want to read this and with just great gratitude that you guys are here in the village, that um, we're so proud of your accomplishment, your family's accomplishment, and we're grateful to have you here in the village. So this proclamation is for Fishfield Tire and Auto Repair on their 55th anniversary. Whereas Fishfield Tire and Auto Repair was established in Fishfield, New York in 1969, Fishfield Tire is a family-owned business that has been operated by the Ross family for three generations. Whereas Fishfield Tire and Auto Repair has built a stellar reputation for providing expert auto service work and providing fair pricing to customers in our community. Whereas the Village of Fishfield is proud to acknowledge the success of Fishfield Tire and Auto Repair. We are honored to have them in our village. Whereas the Village of Fishfield would like to congratulate them on their 55, 55th year anniversary. We thank them for their contributions to our community, contributions to our community, and we wish them many more years of success. Now, therefore, I, Kathleen A. Martin, Mayor of the Village of Fishville, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees and residents, do hereby present this proclamation to Fishville Tire and Auto Repair on the celebration of their 55 years in business. <laughs> Thank you. Girls, my goal is to shoot for 75. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And I just want to say thank you so much. You do every year. These guys do so much for the community. They make T-shirts and they sell them. And this year, the donation is going to our police department and our fire department. So that is amazing. We're happy to resolve. All right. So we're and, we're and last year, I know that you donated to the food pantry. So, you know, thank you so much for keeping it local and giving back to the community. Keep it up. Keep it up. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Where do we go from here? Okay. So we're going to go up to the department um, reports. So, Greg, do you have a report for us tonight? Uh, I, I do have a report. It's uh, going to be some of the uh, items on the agenda. So okay. I'll ask that you pass me for now. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll circle back at the right time. So, okay. The building report is in your binder if you want to take a look at that. Gives a breakdown of everything. Okay, and Brandon is here with us tonight for the fire report. Well, the report for July 2024, number of alarms for the month were 42. For the fiscal yeah. year, we're at 63, and for the calendar year, we're at 184. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> 
Alarms consist of one cooking fire, one passenger vehicle fire, two outside rubbish fires, two medical assists, two MVAs with injuries, one MVA with extrication, one gas leak, three cover assignments, one good and 10 call, six dispatch and canceled en route, one smoke scare, 13 automatic fire alarms, and eight CO detector activations. Our mutual aid alarms were one time to Beacon, three times East Fishkill, one time to Garrison, two times to New Hackensack, and two times to Roundabout. We were canceled six times, and three of those were structure fires. Mm -hmm. All of our equipment is in service. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Okay, the justice report is in your folder. And take a look at that. Oh. Um, and then next on the agenda is our police report and Glenn has the microphone. Yes, uh, activity for the police department for the month of July consisted of six arrests, three service calls, 100 complaints or incidents investigated. Officers issued 26 traffic summonses, investigated 24 automobile accidents, and foot patrol was conducted uh, for 26 hours over the course of 18 different occasions. Uh, the item of note for July was the annual reading of the Declaration of Independence event was held without incident. That's all, all I right, have. Yeah. Okay, and then we will head over to water and sewer. So you will find um, the report is here. Um, let's see what's up. I need the water and sewer end of it at the end during yep. the agenda. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Or just reading through here? Yeah, we'll probably put that part together. Do you want to add anything, Paul? Okay, if anybody has any questions, Paul is here with us tonight. Um, Paul. <laughs> yeah so everything i remember yeah the water um break over by colonial okay All right. okay let's see water and sewer okay clerk nothing okay treasurer Oh, okay. I think so. Okay. 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 So this is that statement that she said she was going to start sending to us. Um, quarterly, I think. Okay. And that brings us to ambulance. You want to talk about renewal? Um, I think. That's a hot topic. Yeah, we need to talk about everything with ambulance. <laughs> well, we are up for renewal with Empress. Mm -hmm. The first offer was a one-year term. Which, uh, which was a 10% raise. Um, I think we're paying about 16 pay and change presently. Mm -hmm. That would bump us to uh, 18, 33370 for 2025. I reached out to Rob Stock at Empress and asked if it's possible for a two year contract in hopes that it would bring down the percentages a little bit. Um, he had to reach out to Ozzy first because we were, going, we're in the agreement together with the town. Mm -hmm. um, 
the town is in agreement entering into the two-year renewal. The raise would come down to 7% for 25, which would put us at 17,83369, and then another 7% for 26, 2026, which would be 19082.05. So what is the total for this year? What would the total be for 2025? With the, with the two-year contract? Yes. 17830 But what, what does it come out to a year? That's, that's oh, per month. Okay. You're set, I'm sorry. Yeah, per month, yeah. Yeah. You got a calculator out? Yeah. Hold on. What, what was it again? Like, seven, well, uh, 173369. 69 times 12. So it's a little better. Yeah, if yeah. we went in at a ten percent, we'd be we'd be at eighteen thousand and change mm -hmm. per month. So this is about five hundred dollars less a month. So mm -hmm. about so six thousand six thousand. Yeah, right. 6, yeah. So I was just giving a little bit of a back um lesson, like history of what everything we went through. Is that with this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um after we um signed a contract with um empress then the next year the town and um the village did a joint agreement and part of the agreement is that the ambulance stays at the town of fishka like they house it there and they um have some office space and a place for the um paramedics to sleep so um that's at town hall that's at town hall yeah so they're close by um and that's been working out pretty well for us. Um, we've been getting this data every month, which we love. <laughs> and we <laughs> kind of pour over it. Um, but this this has been very expensive. But, um, you know, it's really important to us that the residents um, have the service and, you know. Uh, yes, yes. So, um, and now we had budgeted for this year because we were in at what, like 200,000 last year. We thought it might go up to like, so we budgeted 210 <laughs> because we thought maybe it would go up. Well, what they initially came back with a higher number. So with Nick negotiating the two-year agreement, they were able to bring the cost per year down a little bit, you know, but it's better than it was. So um, that was a really big jump for us um, budget-wise. It was like huge for a small village, but um, the joint agreement has been working out well. Um, I did reach out to Ozzy and ask him if he was going to be signing with them again, and he was, and yeah. you know, um, was hopeful that we were going to too. And now with the two-year agreement, it's even a little bit better, I think, for <laughs> you know. It's not a ton of savings, but it is savings. So, and, and it's again, a, it locks us in for two years. Right. Again, peace of mind really comes to mind. Right. right. We don't have to think about it for a while. Right. We have to budget. And this contract is up in December, correct? Correct. Yes. So we do have time, but um, this has been such a problematic issue. So that's going to take us. Let's get out the. Um, like what was the 20. 26? Yeah, 19. 082.05. Also, keep in mind, there's nobody else out there right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Ambulance is the only other one, and they're kind of not really there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and there's concerns about them leaving the area. So. <laughs> um, it's a big concern. And, and what I was um, saying before, too, um, you know, right now the city of Beacon's doing well with that, but if they leave, then you know that's going to be a problem again for all of us. So, if you want to look at this um, handout now, the Region Four Emergency. This is the meeting that I attended with um, all of the towns. The one last, I will okay. forward the new contract to everybody this evening. Okay. That's Robert Stocks, I think. Okay. Um. And so this kind of goes through what's been going on. Apparently, you know, in years past, there was a lot of handshake agreements. Um, a lot of companies, ambulance companies have come and gone. 
Um, and there were a lot of kind of loose agreements between providers and municipalities. Um, the people that provide the service, the paramedics, um, they do not get paid <laughs> well. Uh, I think that's a big, big problem in this equation is that the people that are actually like on the front lines and, you know, providing these services are not being um, compensated for that. Um, so they've seen a big also uh, decline in volunteering, as we know, for like fire departments, ambulance, um, it's different today. A lot of people don't work locally. Like it's not as easy to get people to volunteer. And there's also a lot of training that goes along with it. So there's been a big decline in volunteerism. And so we are dependent on these agencies, um, the ambulance agencies. So, you know, as we said, it's not mandatory that we provide the service it's really scary to think about what would happen if we didn't provide this service. So, I mean, it's, um, we will be providing this service. It's just now figuring out how things are going to shape up in the future. So, it's only, right. It's and, it's and there is a concern um, with the county and they are taking some steps to, um, help the municipalities. So they're offering some um, scholarships to Dutchess Community College. Um, they are encouraging, um, I think, grants for fly cars. They want to, um, you know, they're promoting that idea. But really, there is a serious problem with this overall. And, uh, and honestly, in our area, we're kind of lucky because we are close by other people and we we used to have a hospital but now we don't but now we go to Newburgh or Poughkeepsie but if you lived way north a lot of the towns are very remote and um getting to a hospital is a big deal so you know it breaks it all down it shows you all the other towns what their contracted services are um, what our deal is, and um, I feel like I'm not sure what the village of Wappingers does on the Wappinger side. I'm not really clear about that, but I know half of it is for Poughkeepsie. They go under Poughkeepsie. Um, Kathy, this number here, the 370. 370,000 town of Fishville, that okay. includes our village? That includes everybody, yeah. That includes the town and the village. And our, what do we currently pay? Our share is about 200,000. So we actually paid a bit more. We do. Okay. And the, the reason being was because they were providing the office space and the Got all it. of that. Yeah, the amenities. So, um, yeah. And it breaks it all down. It shows you it's it's time on task. You know, the different priorities of call, like a life-threatening injury, you know, the different priorities. And um, such. So, yeah. And then it gets into some of the neighboring municipalities on page nine. And you can see what some of the other municipalities are paying. So it's pretty... Um, pretty expensive <laughs> and there's a lot of different scenarios you know like East Fishfield they have a rescue squad um but they pay for it you know like it says zero here but the town actually funds it so they don't have an outside company uh town of LaGrange is the Arlington Fire Department so And I mean, I think, um, you know, a, a, a big issue here is the response time. That's like the big, the big issue with the priority one calls, like, you know, um, response time under nine minutes, and then you see how it goes out from there.
So it's really kind of eye-opening, like when you get all of this data. And so um, the town of Fishkill was there, the village of Fishkill was there, the town of Wappingers was there, the town of East Fishkill was there. Um, We had representatives from the county, county executive Serena was present. And, you know, the county, I believe at some point really has to get involved with this. Um, It's really, um, we need the help, all the municipalities. And I think, you know, they um, see the problem and they are, you know, highly supportive of the idea of collaborations across town and village lines, like we're already doing. Um, You know, so I think that was like a really positive move that we collaborated with the town. Um, You know, and and the um, cost sharing. And um, so there's going to be more county involvement going forward. But at this point, I think they're kind of on a fact finding mission and trying to see like where the issues are in the county and how are they going to approach it so did you want to add anything anthony on this note anybody nick yeah yeah so this is a lot of stuff to to digest um we've been lucky here um we have been fortunate and i think the fact that we do have the joint agreement is a positive and the fact that if we could lock into a two-year contract you know for a little a slightly lower rate but even to have the two-year contract protects us it protects the village you know for the next couple of years we don't know what's going to happen in this industry that's part of the problem you know i don't think anybody knows at this point but so that's where we're at. But if you want to look at the Empress report from um, in the year binder for this is our Fishgill, Village of Fishgill coil data just from July. And, um, you know, it makes, um, you know, it shows on the back like the um, nature of the coal and it kind of breaks everything down for us. Um you know, it's interesting to see by the day, like <laughs> the the high call days and times and um but so we want to start thinking about that, how we want to move forward, like give some thought to the contract. Um, if anybody knows of any other service providers out there that we could possibly um have come in and talk to us, um, we'd be open to that, but um, we do have a couple months to, you know. Yeah, if anybody knows of anybody else, please get in touch with me. Yeah. Give me a name and a number and I'll reach out. Yeah. Do you know anything, Glenn? Have you heard of? No. Okay. Nothing positive. Though, that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think, uh, honestly, I think we're in the best case scenario that we could be in at this time. I mean, we have a contract, it's going well we're lucky because some places don't even have providers. So that's good. Okay. So we have a um, police officer, Mark. What? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I skipped you, Hans. <laughs> Hi, Hans. <laughs> Do you have a report for planning and zoning? Yeah, we don't have a, we won't have a meeting in the August. Don't, we don't have a form for the meeting. The Thunder meeting, we'll have two public hearings. Uh, two public hearings. One is uh, the Cannabis Shop and the uh, CBS Plaza. And the other one would be for urgent care at uh, the small plaza there at 9 and Main, and nine and Main Street. Mm -hmm. and that's where Domino's Pizza is where Domino's Pizza is right Orange Bank is it or whatever Mm -hmm. that that thing changes names like people change socks so taking over Domino's no they're going in in the complex there 
uh, the reports that we saw is sort of like, yeah, there's a lot more information we need here. Uh, the traffic, their parking lot studies weren't anything right. And they had some uh, neighboring uh, things like the ice cream shop they had that was no longer there. The building is there, but the ice cream shop not there. So they have to uh, update everything. They said they would have all the information for the public hearing. So wait and see. Uh, like I say, the ball is in their court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, all right, I'm going to go back to, um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the resignation of police officer Mark Baden. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Best of luck to him. I he's moving south. Oh, okay, you already left. <laughs> well, good luck to him. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and that's what Glenn said. Another person leaving New York. I was like, oh, okay. And um, would you like to talk to us about appointing Anthony Hensley? Yes, Mayor and Board. It's uh, my recommendation that the uh, village appoint Anthony Hensley. Uh, he was a candidate for the part, uh, position of part-time police officer with the Village of Fishkill Police Department. Anthony's a resident in the town of Poughkeepsie. He's been employed in law enforcement for approximately four years. Uh, he was working in the Village of Wapagers and currently works over in the uh, town of Marlboro. And he also has uh, volunteer fire experience. He was a uh, officer with the uh, Village of Wapagers Fire Department. Um, he it is difficult to recruit good people and people of good character. Uh, working in a, in a village atmosphere like he did in Wappingers, he's familiar with you know, the expectations of the village of Fishkill as far as community-oriented policing. Um, I do think Anthony would be a huge asset to the village and hopefully he'll be able to stay for her since he's so young. He'll be able to stay for her. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, my recommendation that the village board appoint Anthony Hensley as a part-time police officer. Thank you, Glenn. Okay, so I will entertain a motion to appoint Anthony Hensley to the Village of Fishko Police Department. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Well, Welcome. Please. No moving to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Our mayor. Welcome. Mark. Congratulations. Trustee Anthony Ruggiero, Trustee Ann Machado. Welcome. And once the meeting is done, you'll sign the so. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Okay. Um, so planning board reappointments for Ezra Holly and Anthony Malia. Mo, mo, is that how you say it? Right, yeah. Oh, I did yeah. say it right. Okay. Um, so these would be now, how long of an appointment is this? Five years. Five years. Okay. So these are current planning board members up for reappointment. I'll entertain a motion to reappoint both planning board members, Ezra Holly and Anthony Malala, for uh, reappointment to the planning board. So second. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, yes. Actually. Okay. Um, I'd like to know, Hans, is everybody current with their training? His fellow window, yes. Who's, who's keeping record of that? Uh, this is upstairs. Okay. Jenny would have that. And the attendance of these two board members, have they been in good attendance for these meetings? Yes. Anthony Malella, he's had a good stellar attendance record? Um, I, I would say yes. Uh, he missed the last meeting because he had a problem with his son. like to know the level of commitment of these individuals and make sure all their training is up to date before we move ahead. That, that is up to the board. New York State says that you have to have four credits per year. And it is up to the board to determine uh, whether they wish to appoint or not appoint uh, that person. 
I would, I would, I would be for reappointment if, if those, if the requirements have been satisfied. So that's what I'm asking. If the requirements have been satisfied by both members. As far as I know, yes. I, I, I haven't seen uh, uh, little, uh, uh, your sheets as to when you take the course, you get a sheet and then it's turned into uh, Gina for, for the file. I don't look at that information. Does the county keep record of that? Not at all. No. So it's just kept here. Yeah, that's right. All right. So. And we don't. Hmm? We don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so we could uh, wait until next month. Just table until next we'll, month. But that's going to, we're not going to be able to have a planning board meeting. Well, when they be holdovers, Greg? Yeah, they, they over in okay. Until we All right, so let's um find out from Jenny at cons if you could do that for us. Okay. If both of these people have done their training and just report back to us next month that they're up they're current on their training. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, if they, and if they haven't, have them do it before the next meeting. And yes. If they want to be part, yes. Well, uh, in, we're setting up a in-house training with Sarah and uh, Victoria and things like that. We just had one recently. Right, but that's not going to happen in the next month. So they need, if they're short of credits, they need to get those credits within the next month before the next. Meeting. I'm going to with that. Yeah. yeah, if they want to continue. If not, there's other people that want to, you know, be on the board. So, yeah, yes. I'm sure they probably did. We yeah. just, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they've done it. And, you know, you can just give us that information at the next meeting. If they didn't, then it's hard to proceed if you're not doing the continuing ad. <laughs> um, reach out to them tonight. Send an email or text. Let them know it's required if they haven't done it. Okay, we'll we could check with Jenny tomorrow and yeah, see if she has check in the morning. Yeah, check in the morning and see what she has in the file. And then if they haven't done the training, you could reach out to them as the chairman and say, Hey, you know, you're up for reappointment. You know, do you want to continue? If so, you need to do this training. Yeah, and if they haven't, they might just need some guidance on where and how when to do it. Okay. Yeah. Do we currently have a minimum number of meetings that members should attend to consider themselves members in good standing? No, not that I know of. I don't know if there's anything in the uh, village code. I don't believe so. No, there's nothing in the code. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. All right, so we can get that information for the next meeting. But we have some other new people that were um, all interviewed by the chairman. And this is an order of application. We have Trisha Rice, who has actually already done some of the training. Um, so we have her information here. We also have, this is just an email from Joe Testa. Um, he lives on Shirley Avenue. He is a teacher in the Van Wyck Junior High School. He had expressed interest actually a couple of years ago. Um, and it just tells you a little bit about him. So he is interested in serving. And then we also have a um, resume here from Esther Jackson. And she was also, these people were all interviewed. She was the most recent Apple kind of. So at this point in time, my understanding is we have two full members openings on the planning board and two alternates. Is that correct? Uh, no, uh, full time, but the five year members uh, we we'd be three because uh, Danielle resigned. So we'd have to fill her spot, and whoever takes the her spot. The continuation of her term. Would be, yeah, would be for the duration of her term. Mm -hmm. And then when that term came up, then that person would be up for a five-year term. Right. That's only one spot, though. Is that, there, that, that's correct. That's that only one the spot. only opening? No, yes, that's the only opening. Okay, so one, 
planning board member, and then two alternates. Mm, that's correct. All right. We have three applicants. They've all been interviewed, and going in the order of their applications, the planning board member would be um, Trisha Rice, and the two alternates, the next person would be Mr. Testa, and then um, Esther Jackson. So I will entertain a motion to appoint Trisha Rice to fulfill the unexpired term of Danielle Hughes on the planning board. How much is left on that, sir? Three years. Three years. So you want to do those two separate motions? Yeah. All right. So I'll entertain a motion for Trisha Rice to fulfill the unexpired term of Daniel Hughes as a planning board member. So okay. is there any discussion? Uh, yeah. So we have three applications here. Yes. And how many people live in this village? How, my, my question would be to everyone here. How would anybody know that there's a vacancy in the village? Have we advertised that we have vacancies on our website? Like, how would somebody know to apply? Well, I mean, we take, do you, you want to answer that? This past year, it was about the first year that uh, applications have come in as to people wanting to or would be interested in during a planning board last year, we've had to go out and beat the bushes, put letters in the paper, and of course, until very recently, we didn't have a, 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 a good website. Oh, yeah, a good website. That's what you were doing. So, I mean, uh, for a number of people that uh, I've gone in contact with, and, uh, I've went to the board members, I said, you know, anybody interested that would become a planning board? I need people. And uh, some people have come forward. I interviewed them. I told them what about it. And uh, when they said, no, not interested, don't want to get involved. I mean, municipalities do all different things to um, advertise if they're in need of planning board, assessment review board, you know, whatever board. Um, they can put it on their website. I was actually thinking what we should do is to devise, and maybe you would like to take this on. A form, mm -hmm. a volunteer form, and just put it right on the website mm -hmm. for all volunteer positions. Yeah, because I think that I looked at some other websites and I see that some other municipalities have that. And I mean, I know some, you know, other towns maybe take out an ad in the paper once in a while or not. You know, um, we've just kind of taken application in as they came or as people expressed interest. Well, that's, that's the other thing. Now, if we're taking these in order of application, one, two, and three, what what is the, what's the validity of the resume? Well, did you read them? I mean, they're- Of course, yes, and I find some- But what do you mean, what's quality. the validity? I, if we're entertaining resumes, are we doing it by merit? Or are we doing it by ordinal of acceptance of, of how the application, is it first come, first serve? Or is it going to somebody, or is it by qualification? Well, by criteria. The people were all interviewed by my myself, and well, I spoke to all of them, and Hans interviewed them all. But they the went. End, this round was in order of application. See what I'm saying, though. If we have application, we have a resume here that's I don't know, six pages, right? Six pages. Seven pages, but yeah. other people have been waiting and want to serve as well. So then my point is, why are we entertaining resumes at all? Well, it would be wise to have some documentation on file as to the people we're appointing. You see what I'm saying, though? If we're doing first come, first serve. We don't have resumes for Ezra Holly or um, Anthony Malella. For but they're already current. They've already been interviewed and have been serving on the boards. I mean, they've already been interviewed. Okay. If 
think that in the future, we need to let every village resident know we've got over 2,000 people that live here mm -hmm. and we have three applications. Well, sadly, that's kind of the way it is. <laughs> but I'm happy to put it on the website. I'm happy to uh, devise a volunteer form and put that on the website. I mean, I'm open to any suggestions to get people energized and that want to serve. Absolutely. We don't want to discourage any volunteers, any people that... You're not exactly right. And in this, you know, case, it the you know chairman's does um, interview, and his recommendation does weigh heavily. I would like to make a motion to table this until the next meeting, until we get adequate volunteers. Try again and make have many applicants. Do we have a motion? Well, hold on, Greg. We have the first motion and the second, and this was discussion. So do we have to vote on the first motion before we can entertain the second motion? Yep. Yeah, yeah or nay. Mm -hmm. And then, then we could entertain the second motion. So... Right, so there was a motion, a second, discussion. Okay. Oh, that's Patricia. Yes. And so there's a motion, a second, and discussion, so... Yeah, there was discussion, yes. Okay, so we'll ask the clerk to call a roll call vote. Yes. <laughs> yes. Trustee Ruggiero. Yes. Trustee Machado. Abstain. Okay. Motion is carried. And so, okay. So now we have the two alternates. And Anne, do you want to make a motion? Uh, no. I mean, You've already put through. There's two. You've already you've already put through an an application. So why should these two applicants be at fault? What do you mean that they're at fault? We're trying to put them on the board. We're trying to put them on the board. I'm saying my idea would have been to table all of these candidates right. until the next meeting, until we got applications in, and here we are. We've already moved one through. So now we're going to move on to these two. But we were in the middle of a motion. Okay. Discussion. Okay. Um, then Do you want to take wait. these two for, next, so for the next meeting? No, we'll proceed. But going forward, we want you want going a form. forward. I think we need to entertain applications from a more diverse, more than three, mm -hmm. because we have three positions and three applicants. We actually have two other openings on the zoning board for alternates. Okay, then we should do yeah. that. We That's, that so. Out. Will you think about? Do you think making an application? for the web page is a good idea? Do you think that that's a valid? I think us getting the word out to the community is mm -hmm. the idea. And how do you, how should we do that? Well, it's not on the website that we were seeking applications. Mm -hmm. It's not on the board that we're see out front that we're seeking applications. We've got a beautiful community board at Sarah Taylor Park. There's no signage there indicating we're seeking or entertaining. All right, so we will put up a sign that we are always seeking applications for volunteers. Correct, and okay. at the library, I mean, we've got plenty of, of places to post these things to get community involvement. Okay. And what? So when uh, do we want a form, or do you want them to submit a resume? 
I don't care either way. Oh, I don't. I don't care either way. I think a form is fine. I mean, you know, whatever you know shows community interest. We've got three resumes here. Like I said, if we're going by a resume, to me means you're deciding by qualification. That's not the case here. So it's just, it should be just a form. You just need documentation. That then it should just be a form showing okay. a, a citizen's interest in serving. Okay, that's fine. But Would you like to design but that? But it still may not be by resume. So we would have to determine how you want, just because we get the resume or the form or whatever the qualification is, then we need to determine process. It right, could still and we don't have, by, that's what I'm saying. There it could is still not. be by um, first in. It could be, but we have no language to support that. I think we do though, don't we, Greg? I think we do. Louise says no. <laughs> Okay. So with that said, do we still want to entertain to put, I guess it's the full, for the full board, right? So to put the two alternates on and then establish the process going forward? Yes. So the mayor asked for a motion, so then I'll make a motion to entertain for the two alternates. Okay. And, oh, I'm sorry. Second. Any more discussion? I do have one question. Okay. <laughs> so with the alternates, how many years are there? Do they follow the same as the? <laughs> the alternates have to have uh, the four quarters a year, and they and they were altering only for one year. They have to be renewed every year. So alternates have to be renewed every year. Correct. But they have to maintain the four hours of credit. Correct. Okay. Okay. So those alternates ever moved up into a yes. are they yeah. able to slide up then? Oh, yeah. oh, yes. if, if, if one of my board members is absent, then the first alternate would take what would be a voting member. But you meant if there's a vacancy. And then yeah, the vacancy. That, that, right. Right. Typically right. what happens is Hans looks at or we look at the alternates that are on the right on the board. Historically we've just moved alternates up to full Correct. Positions. As people have resigned, we've moved the alternates up. Correct. How do you decide which alternate gets moved up? Is it, how well, do you, you create a, a, that order? No, so if, if both the alternates are here, the, the, uh, uh, the first, first come, first serve, and then the second okay. time around, the second alternate, I normally say, okay, uh, so and so was at the, uh, it was a was a voting member last time. I need one this time. So it's the other alternate. So it's so it, no. It's not the same alternate constantly filling in one spot. Right. Yeah. I would go from one to the other. Okay. And there are times when I have two or two or three board members. So those alternates will be uh, voting members at that meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Any do you want to put together the form? Yeah, I'm just going to go. I'll, I'll look and see what other communities are doing. And we'll find a form and we can upload that and and, and maybe have them uh, printed and like at the library, have them accessible to for people to see. And when we have a vacancy, our community should know it and not just three people. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been hard to get people. It is no, hard. That. It's that. very hard. Uh, but, but here's a question I have for you. So you're going to create a sign and a form. What about Saratero Park? You put a sign up saying pick up the form at the library? Or pick up a form at the Village Hall. Perfect. You know, yeah. sign it. Just yeah, I wouldn't. Sign. Yeah. 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 Just Person. Give as many options as possible. Yes. Pick up a village. You know, pick up. It really should be picked up here. Yes, it should. Because yes. we are separate from the Correct. library. But right. I, and I, that I, board. I would put it at the library. And we can't I, put yeah. a sign there saying that we're seeking. No. No. Julie tends to like to keep things. I shouldn't say Julie, but Julie and the board, Julie and the board, right? So the library <laughs> likes to keep things kind of separate, right? Okay. Um, and plus, if you're going to volunteer, I would have it here. I would put it on our website, <laughs> and I would have the form here in Village Hall, which I think right. is appropriate. You put it out front on the board. Out on the board. Yeah. Right. Taylor. I mean, certainly uh, we can advertise it. I think we put something simple on our website, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly people watching tonight 
if anybody's watching or that this is forwarded, we're looking for volunteers. Yeah. Please, please feel free. Please come forward. We need come them. forward. <laughs> <laughs> we so, always but need yeah, I would, I would, that's what I would do. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? It just yeah. needs to be that's fine. You know, we have three sure. petitions and three applications. Mm -hmm. I think if you look, oh, I think you'll be surprised. We can we can send so Beacon has a simple form and yeah. all the municipalities it, it's a pretty one pager yeah um, and it also asks for a resume attached just because that has right obviously your resume is much more information so I think right. that's what we're... but a resume is not necessary it can be just a form to correct be, yeah. yes that's correct okay so did we vote. No, we need to vote. <laughs> not on the alternate. alternate. So I don't know what the board. What was is your pleasure on the alternates? Would you like to table it to the nope. next month? I made a motion. We had a second. Okay. And this was just this. Okay. Uh, discussion. Discussion. All right. Do a roll call vote, please. Mayor Martin. Aye. Trustee Colon. Yes. Trustee Rogerio. Yes. Trustee Lee. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. And I do agree with you, Anne, that it is um, something that needs to be put out there frequently. And it, I mean, this, again, is something that all municipalities struggle with, too. I mean, finding people that want to volunteer because it is a time commitment and, you know, there's education involved. But it, as many people as we can um, get there, interested. Is there a way because we have email alerts through the village clerk? Can that be sent as an email blitz? We are just now as part of that. Actually, that's something I forgot to tell you in my update. Um, I met with the um, person that handles the e-gov delivery, the uh -huh. email, and we are just setting that up now. Okay. So we're going to be able to send out emails. Because that, 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 that would... Is that just delivery? Yes. Yeah. So, would that be something that we could add to that? Sure. That just delivery. Yeah. And that way every village resident okay. knows. Absolutely. Okay. That would be and I think in time we'll probably also be able to hi him over here. Hi, hi. Oh. <laughs> I think in time we'll also be able to take applications on. Yeah, that's a great idea too. Okay. Yeah, I know. I think yes. the, with the form, if we take them in online and just have Ginny keep a folder with everything in it, it will be perfect. But this again, it was one of these, you know, um well, we can use the zoning uh vacancies as yeah. uh as a test run for do you need two alternates and then we also always have our activities committee which we're always looking for volunteers um we do a lot of activities throughout the year so we're constantly um looking for people to help with that too okay so that so would that be another maybe we could list that up right. on the website and get right. that we'll, we'll work on that together okay perfect um okay so we're done with that and now we are going to move on to Sarah is here with us tonight. We are going to have a discussion on the cannabis law. And Greg as well. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Sarah Brown, the village planner, just in case anyone watching doesn't know who I am. Um, I have worked in the village since 2006. I have been your planning consultant that long. Um, I started out of kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so Greg had reached out to me because I know there were some questions about uh, the cannabis use with opting in and incorporating something into the zoning law about that. Um, so this is something that we have done for some other municipalities uh, as cannabis is looked at right now, it's just a retail use. Uh, you already currently have retail in your zoning law. So any cannabis use that would come in would be viewed as a retail use. Um, you are allowed, uh, the state allows you um, as a municipality to regulate time, place, and manner in zoning. So that means you're not issuing the license for these. It's similar to a liquor license or anything like that. But within your zoning code, you can decide where in the village you would prefer to have these uses in what zoning districts. And if you are going to have them be a permit, a principally permitted use or a special use within your zoning. Um, so I don't know if you want me to do a deep dive on where we could have it. I know we had a discussion once 
about potential areas to have it. The Route 9 corridor came up. Mm -hmm. um, that's generally the PI district, which would be south of the intersection with 52. I think north of it is actually the PB2 district. Mm -hmm. uh, like the ShopRite Plaza is not planned industrial as well. Um, by eliminating, el eliminating to that area, uh, you would get... Um, it would it would keep it along the Route Nine corridor if that is the village's uh, desire, um, but you could also look at all of your commercial districts, mm -hmm. and you know the level that you want to look at it. You can't go more restrictive than uh, the requirements of the state licensing. So there are separation distances in the state licensing. You can't be more restricted than that. Um, there's also hours that are listed. I think you. And I'm doing this from the top of my head. I think it's 70 hours uh, per week. You can't limit them to less hours than that of being open. Uh, the fear was that they, you know, may be permitted in a municipality, but they would only allow them to be open, you know, on a Friday from two to three. Uh, so you have to let it uh, do business as a regular business. And all of those parameters are in there. Um, but that is something that if you do want to add it to the zoning law, we can certainly draft something up for you mm -hmm. to put before you. Um, and then you can have conversations about those. The only recommendation I do have um, is to be redundant with the state law. So then if the state decides to take the separation distances out, you know, you can't be within a thousand feet of each other or 500 feet of other things that you would still have those in. And then you don't have to monitor what the state is constantly doing if they end up changing the law, because then you would have to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. so. How does this affect where we have an applicant pending? Correct. So there being um, that application is being reviewed as a retail use because that is what you currently have in your zoning law. Right. And so our concern um, came up because, um, you know, when we first started talking about this, it wasn't even legal yet. Right. Um, and we did have you in, what, about a year ago? I think it was actually... Maybe two years yeah, ago. Two years ago. Yeah. In 21, we needed to opt out December. Uh-huh. And uh, so, Well, I came in after the opting. Yeah. That was after. To have a discussion. To have a discussion about the state law and what the parameters were and if... Right, and the amount of fee... Could, correct, if it could be incorporated into the zoning law, because mm -hmm. more of an informational session. Right. So at that time, um, you know, we weren't overly concerned because we thought the state was going to be monitoring the um, schools and, you know, like children, like churches and everything. But now with the cannabis being just a general retail use, they're not the New York State um, cannabis uh, group is not really identifying like gymnastics there was a concern brought up by um another trustee that there's a large gymnastics studio over there like a dance you know right. studio like these kind of entities are not being identified by new york state correct so it's my understanding that when an applicant goes to receive a license uh the state board does a review to make sure that where the license is being issued for that the separation distances are being met. So they mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to get a license without those. But uh, the state's definition of a school would not be a dance studio, a gymnastics studio, a karate studio, because those mm -hmm. aren't the, schools. Does the percent. current applicant have a license? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if they have their full license yet, but they wouldn't be able to go into business and- They wouldn't be able to open. Correct. They wouldn't be able to open. So they would be operating right now at their own risk. And it's not for consumption. It's only for. Correct. It's just a retail shop. Just a retail shop. Mm -hmm. you know, what is the date of their application? Do we know? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, they have been in the pipeline for. Pro yeah, probably almost but, a year. I think it was last summer that they first came. So. If, I guess two questions. If we don't have a law, then they can go anywhere where retail is permitted. Correct. And if you if the board approves this application, and it turns out they get denied from the um, their license, I'm sorry. Yes. So if they don't get their license, then the site plan is good for one year, and can then somebody else, can he, 
can that person sell them a site, you know, so sell, sell the rights. Okay. And then if I have a, and then Anthony comes in with his license, then I can go right in. Right, right? because you would have, similar to any use where somebody has an approved site right. so plan. Why, why would we put him through the process if we're not verifying if he has a license? And I'm kind of shifting my eyes towards our attorney also. <laughs> yeah. So when you want to see whether or not he has a license, because then if they don't get it, somebody else could just move in, correct? I, I, I think that's more of a legal question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, but it, it would be it would because the site plan is good for one year, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if the state board has requirements that you, I don't know that you can just flip a site plan. Mm, well, as far as the cannabis, not like other site plans. Right? Yeah, that right. might be a site plan. That somebody might get approval for and flip. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I don't now, know. Yeah. But I'm asking the question. It's a good question. <laughs> Obviously, um, whoever goes in there to sell cannabis has to have a license. So they don't have a license. I don't. The state of New York would have to look at the the, the new candidate to see if that person has a license and whether they could take over the application. But presumably, if it was within a year of their site plan approval, in theory, right? Yeah. Okay. I do have. But can we ask? Can we ask for their license? I mean, I could, oh, I think I think we certainly could. It, yeah, we can, can. You make it. You can always make it. Apologize. No, no, no. You're, you can always make it subject to getting your license. Mm -hmm. Your site plan. Could we? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then this, if if you were to make it a, not in this case because we're just looking at retail, but for future application, if you did make it a special permit. That would put another level of review on it, and yeah. then uh, more more conditions could go into the resolution. That you know, the this special use permit is being uh, granted to that specific business and the parameters that we have reviewed. You know, mm -hmm. uh, delivery services, the way the parking is, how everything would be set up, the mm -hmm. business itself. Would you agree with that, yeah. Greg? And my, we, my, my suggestion to the board is that we consider a local law to restrict where we want it, uh, this use, mm -hmm. and to put the special use permit conditions on. Yeah. So even if this particular use does not go through or the license, applicant doesn't get a license, we can be in a position to control it where cannabis goes in, in in the village in the future. That would be my recommendation. But right. we, we have Sarah proceed with the local drafting of a local law. And also, can you address the um, on-site consumption as well? Yes, we in can that. incorporate that. Yeah, incorporate in. that, because I think we're all in agreement that we don't want that as well. Right. Out of that? I, well, I, we have to pass the local law. In order to do that, wasn't there an expiration date for opting in, opting out for certain aspects of cannabis use, whether it be dispensary, on premise, off premise, grow station, grow house? Didn't we opt out of, you know, on premise consumption? And Greg would know better than I would. Okay. It, it, uh, I'm not aware of no, we, we spoke about it, so, but we haven't. Well, I have the list here of all the opt outs from retail and on site consumptions, and the village of Fishkill is not part of this list for Duchess County. Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. We have to incorporate the on site consumption. So, the consumption would we would do it similar to how we're doing the retail. You would identify what district. I mean, I think we don't want that at all. I, by opting in, I think you have to include it in one of your districts. The on-site consumption? Yeah. And really. by doing a local law, we're opting in. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not a local law that you're opting in. I think by not opting out, I think that has expired. Mm -hmm. We did not opt in. Therefore, we did not opt out. Therefore, yeah. by default, in. we we're opted out. in. Right. But we don't have any of the language to support that opt in in our code. Correct. That's like you right. don't address if we don't. consumption Correct. right now. And that's what we're trying. We still can. Yes. The window. Can. Yes. Except for this one applicant. Right. <laughs> right. Because he's in. Like if if well, zoning 
gets involved and decides they want to have it, not say on Main Street, say they want to have it on that. Yeah, street. no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can dictate where you Correct. would like it to be. Yes. Correct. So yeah. you can dictate the outcome. So what I was saying is you can't opt out of having it as a use. Correct. Yes, right. that, that ships. Right. That's, I'll clarify, that's what I was saying. You can't opt out as having it as you. That won't work. Yeah. So. But, can we, I don't, can on site consumption still be addressed? Yes. In what, in the zoning, yes. yes. Right. As a use, and then you would have to dictate where, what zoning districts it would be permitted in and where it would not be permitted. Okay. Um, I did meet with, Tom Brooks um, mm -hmm. from zoning, and he would love to have a conversation with you about this. Okay. So um, we had discussed previously about the, is it the PI district? It is the PI district. Down on Route 9. Yes. Um, yes, that would it would go to Montfort as well. Part of Elm Street is PI and then I think we get into PB1 on on the other side of Elm Street. Mm -hmm. But I can if you want to I I can put the law together for you and then I can attach a copy of the zoning okay. and we can have an informed discussion about what properties it would take in and where it would be located okay. specifically. I think so. And yeah. moving forward can we put a hold on any other applications that may come forward until this is matter settled out? You, I mean, as a board, you can put a moratorium on something to study it. Um, it wouldn't stop what is currently in the pipeline, no, but it would, yeah. It would prevent 1,000 feet and 1,000 feet and 1,000 feet until we get a line, uh, you know, yeah. get this codified. But then there's also concern about the state, though, too, with the about. Well, this. I mean, I don't want to give you legal advice, but I know in, yeah. in the past, uh, Greg can uh, weigh in on this, but in the past, uh, we've done six month moratoriums before to study very specific sections of the zoning law while we're updating code. So mm -hmm. I, as long as you are actually proactively doing it and not doing it to stop something, I think it's yeah. certainly something you could do. Well, I think it's warranted, definitely. Yeah, we, we could put in a moratorium, a six month moratorium would okay. be reasonable. So, okay. I think so. Okay. Because I think, you know, there is definitely, um, since this started, you know, since it came about, things have definitely changed with the state and um, with the Office of Cannabis Management. Um, things are kind of like rapidly changing. And, you know, we want to make sure that we, I mean, I, I don't think that the village of Fishkill is the appropriate place for a lot of that so um i think it would be a good thing for us to move forward and look at a local law yeah because i mean it's a small village and we do we have a lot of um you know churches and school like there's a lot of families and everything so if we can keep that but separated work and pass a motion to uh, have sarah prepare a draft local law for us to consider um sure. going forward to the, after tonight all right. And a moratorium? And a moratorium. So. Would that be? Yeah, would be reasonable. Yeah. yeah so I asked. Separate motion, separate motion, right? For a moratorium? Um, you can put it all in one motion. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. If they decide on the moratorium, what about this? You can't do it that through. Well, he still can. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, you can't. Uh, can't put a license. That one you can't do anything about. So that would be the motion to uh, okay. have Sarah prepare the local, local law. law and a moratorium to this okay. type of use. Six months? Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Six months. Motion. Okay. Is there a second? Yes. Any more discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Oh, okay. Discussion on relevying unpaid water and sewer onto property taxes. So this um, was something I started to look into a while ago. Um, I had made a phone call 
to the county because I was a little bit confused when I found out that we don't relevy our unpaid water and sewer bills onto the property taxes because that is what most other municipalities do. Um, and I didn't really get anywhere with them. So I circled back and I put in a call to the commissioner of finance, spoke with her. I spoke to the director of real property tax. And then I contacted every other village in Dutchess County and they all relevy their taxes, their unpaid water and sewer onto the property taxes. So um, I had Greg look into this for me and um, we are gonna begin doing that. We are gonna start with our, um, our own property taxes. So we're gonna be relevying this year on the village taxes any unpaid water and sewer um, bills onto the property taxes so that the village can recapture the money for the services that have been rendered. Mayor, I, I, as you requested, I will do research of the New York State laws related to this mm -hmm. and I prepared a resolution for your consideration. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so this will just be a better way for us to um, collect, you know, what's owed to the village and not have to wait sometimes several years, um, you know, for our, our um, money that is owed to us. And then it also alleviates having to go shut people's water off. And, you know, we don't really want to do that. So, um I'll read the resolution. It says, whereas it has come to the attention of the Board of Trustees that certain water and sewer rents of the village uh, taxpayer owned premises are going unpaid for extended periods of time. And whereas it is necessary that the unpaid water and sewer rents and penalties should be collected in a timely manner by adding same to the annual tax levy for the village of Fishkill. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in accordance with New York State Village Law Section 11-1118 and the General Municipal Law 452, delinquent sewer and water rents together with unpaid penalties thereon shall be added to the annual village tax levy for the respective premises at the end of every tax year. Um, so do I need to make a motion? And... Well, that is a okay. resolution and therefore the board should vote on the resolution. Okay. Is, is, this a, is this a law change then, a resolution? No, this is, here, do you want to? I mean, do we already have line? We don't need to have like a no. public notice on this? No. Law, it's, we're just following state law. So it's not a local law that we're adopting. So it doesn't need a public hearing. Right. This is just um, for whatever reason, the village wasn't doing this. And, um, you know, I think it's important that we do start to do this because there's a lot of money out there that we are not capturing that is owed to us um, for extended periods of time. What and has happened, Mayor, is that in the past, the village has done water shutoffs. Right. Rather than add it onto the tax levy, which is an option. Mm -hmm. You can't do both. You can't shut off the water and add it onto the tax levy. Right. But the past practice of the village was just to shut off the water. Right. Which and we really don't. Did that work? Did people pay their bill? Yes, it worked in quite a few instances, but not always. Not always, and it would take. It's a, it's a hardship for the, for the individual. It might be tenants that are in the property, and now you've got a, a landlord who has to go out to the tenants and the water shut off it, it causes more problems than it solves shutting up the water How much what is the uncollected revenue i do i have that information uh let's see here For the in-village users, the people that live in the village, $32,874.57. Okay. 
So, I mean, there are people that literally have not paid their bill in a couple of years. Um, if people have hardships, they're always welcome to, you know, um, come forward. But, you know, um, for whatever reason, sometimes people, maybe they forget or it gets away from them. So, I mean, that's money that um, we need to recapture. And there is a simple mechanism in the law for us to do it, but it just wasn't the practice of this, you know, and honestly, like a lot, this is a small village and we're trying to become more, you know, modern and um, we're doing great. Like your suggestions and about, you know, advertising more for volunteers. I mean, these are all great ideas and I really feel like we're moving the village forward, but um, we're working with like a really antiquated system here. So come to find out we're the only village that is still shutting people's water off and we don't have to do that. We can simply relevy it onto the taxes. What about, and you may have said this, so I out of- um, I didn't get to that part yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you didn't say it. Nope. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's not a, it's um, really a procedural change. It's not a, like, we're changing a law or anything. That's I cool. feel we should have been doing this. We could have been doing it for right. many years. Yeah. Those people need to be notified in some fashion that this will be happening to them. They'll be notified because they'll be on their tax bill. Right. They, they should have paid the bill or contacted the village. But they'll be notified because it'll be on their next tax bill. Or we could, you know, maybe put out some we could put something on our website. Yeah. And it's on the website. Yeah, we could put a letter maybe out to the public or something. Send it out with the bill. Yeah, letting people know that you know any unpaid bills you could send on the notice. Right. I mean, does that go in like the legal notices, like unpaid taxes? Like do they list do they ever get listed? No, we have not done that. Um no, unpaid water and sewer do no, not get list. No, because they would be paying their taxes. I mean like a, yeah, like an in room process where it's not that it right, would, uh, right. Be re levied on their taxes, right? So, um, yeah, I do think this is the best practice. I did talk to every other village. How? Sorry. I oh, no. And the um, other people I mentioned, the, the director of real property tax and also the director of finance for Dutchess County. So how hard is it on the water bill? Right. So they had a little blurb that says, you know, if I don't pay mm -hmm. a certain day, it'll get us. Is it are we able? Is it hard to put a wording in there that says, you know what we've done um, historically in the village? We have sent other mailings out with the water bill. <laughs> Like the yard sale application, or you know, so we could actually write a letter. That's a good idea. Yeah, put and it in with the water bill. It with the water bills, and just, just say, hey, in. you know, this is what we're going to be doing going forward as of whatever date. Somebody might pay up, and they might, and maybe they forgot, you know, and that's okay. But this way, everybody, like, we're not going to wait. We're not going to have to wait till like someone sells their house, <laughs> or you know, and we really don't want to go shut people's water. We want to maybe consider giving people um, a grace period to go ahead and satisfy their bill before you go ahead and like, when are you looking to, on the how, next, how soon are we looking to the next it? village tax collection, which would be in May. Okay. Yeah. So I think if we notify people by ladder and just say, there'd be a bill is, going out yeah, before this. This is what we're going to, you know, this is what we're planning on doing going forward. It'll maybe jog somebody's memory and say, oh my God, I forgot to pay my water bill. Let me do that. But then I'll be honest with you and other, you know, some people, that's how they pay their water bill. They know it's getting paid on their taxes and they just do it like that. And other, is that 30, how, how many users is that 30? Like, do you know? How many? One person knows a couple thousand, and then somebody else knows a couple thousand. Yeah, I have to. It's hard to quantify. It's hard to quantify. Okay, right. I didn't know how many people were affected. But there are a few people that have significant outstanding balances that need to be addressed. Um. So yeah, I think that's a good idea to send a letter, maybe. And we can even put it on the website too and just everybody knows this is what we're doing going forward.
And now we're doing what everybody else is doing. So that's good. <laughs> um, okay. Did we do this whole question? No, yeah. Well, you read it. Okay, I read it. So now I'm going to take, um, I will entertain a motion to accept the resolution as read. So moved. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated <laughs> when you want to recapture the money in other hands. So there's a lot more owed to us in other. It's about 175, oh, wait a minute, 143,000 is owed to us from other water districts. So what um, we're going to have to do is get... Um, a breakdown of where that is because we do have some. Would that be Wappinger? Would that affect Wappinger too? Uh, the majority in Grand Hill, which is in yeah, Grand. it's going to be fish. We also, have, we also have residents in Putnam, right? In the county that take our water, yeah. So we're going to have to get a grasp yeah. on where you know, and then we're going to have to work with those municipalities and get them to relevy for us on and then give us the money. So that's a little bit more complicated. It's easier, you know, the first step will be to do the village um, users and we'll work on working with the other municipalities to recapture the out of village users. So. Who has to do the late work for that? Um, you, what we have to do is Jenny, our water um, clerk will have to compile a list. She would have to submit it to the county um, before the property tax bills go out. And then we'll have to get the town or the who, whichever town it is to agree to have their receiver um, do that for us. So, and we have to, you know, mo it, the most important thing is really to get the information to the county so that they can add it to the tax bill. But then that way, but that's a lot of money and we're a small village and, you know, that's quite a bit of money for us. So we need to, Get it. <laughs> okay. So that's, um, we're working on that. I just wanted to, you know, have a discussion about that. It's not, you know, a law change or anything, but I just want everybody to know uh, what we're doing. Okay. Um, this is really why Sarah Brown is here tonight. <laughs> she came to talk about the Safe Streets Grant. And um, this is something I'm very excited about. That's okay. I can always talk about zoning too. <laughs> I do it all day long. Um, yes. Uh, thank you for inviting me tonight. So one of the things that we do as your village planning consultant is we keep an eye out for grants uh, that are coming down the pipeline. And when I saw this one, I thought of you and I sent it to Kathy and she emailed me right back and said, yes, we are interested. So this is the state safe streets for all a uh, federal program. It's through uh, the Federal Department of Transportation. And they're giving money to municipalities to study uh, your streets, your intersections, your school zones, basically every inch of the village if we want to, to see where improvements can be made uh, for pedestrian safety and to reduce the amount of motor vehicle accidents. Um, so with Kathy's help, we met with her a few times, a couple times, yeah, yeah, three times, I think. And then Glenn gracious, graciously pulled a lot of data for us about fatalities, motor vehicle accidents, number of injuries, et cetera. So what we have done is we have pulled together all the data that's required, uh, you know, the technical data that's required. Our traffic engineers have gone through it, compiled it. Um, we actually can upload the application, the village uh, the government entity has to do that, uh, but we have all of the supporting documentation ready um, for it to be uploaded. Uh, we're going to send that to Kathy tomorrow. And um, the amount of the grant that we're putting in for, uh, based on the number of intersections and the corridors that we're looking at, uh, which is mainly the Main Street Corridor, uh, Merritt Boulevard, uh, the east side of Route 9, and then we had uh, the school. Yeah. Um, Route 9 by the school. Yeah, and there's some specific intersections that we're also going to study. The other part is we're this is a general ballpark of where we're going to look. As you get into the process, you can absolutely look at other places. If you see that there's not as much issue at a place, but there's issue in a, a different area, then we can certainly do that. 
Um, but the mapping that we've done and the supporting documentation, we have provided a list of, of some corridors and intersections specifically that we think are important to look at. Um, so the total grant uh, would be for two hundred thousand um, dollars, and that would be for a. It's called a planning and demonstration grant, and what that puts together is a traffic action plan. And once that uh, traffic action plan is put together, it will tell you where your dangerous spots are, where you need to make improvements, and we would make recommendations of the type of improvements that you could make to help reduce fatalities, pedestrian injuries, uh, motor vehicle accidents. And then next year, there's another round for actual implementation grants where you could actually apply for more money to implement those things that are identified in the traffic implementation plan. So um, the amount we have estimated based on looking at the cost and everything is a $200,000 grant. So that would be 160 coming from the federal government. And then the village is required to do a 20% match. So that would be a $40,000 uh, match by the village, but it would only be if you are granted right. uh, the grant. <laughs> that also going to be included for the implementation, the 20%? Um, I can get you that answer. I don't know. Um, there are two different applications, and I've been in the weeds on the planning and demonstration, and I don't know the exact figures on the implementation grant. Yeah, so some of the areas that we spoke about were, um, you know, the Route 9 over by the, the school, over by the elementary school, um, the Merritt Boulevard corridor down on Route 9. Um, also, we looked at different um where um, sidewalks were not yes. adequate, like by Trinity Church. Um, we get a lot of complaints, like the sidewalk is not so great over there. Um, yeah, and the crosswalk by the church was also not great. Uh, we right. the crosswalks by the shop right, uh, by the school. Um, it's, it's all of that that we look at. We look at the traffic data of where most of the accidents are happening, mm -hmm. if you've had fatalities, how many pedestrians have been injured, how many people have been injured in the cars. And we came up with a list. And uh, we, you know, being your consultants for the village, we have been, I mean, I've been here since 2006, but my company had been working here um, as FP Clark before we were Hardesty in Hanover. Hans, you could probably tell better than I could. I I think from Greg, maybe to the 80s. Yeah, I, I've been here for 28 years and they were there when I came on. <laughs> yeah, I know some of the files that I come across every once in a while. I have the original files for the ShopRite Shopping Center. So we've been around for a long time. So we do have a, a, a long standing history of where the problem areas are, where we're seeing the changes and so these aren't just random areas that we have selected. Right. No, they're, we, they're problem areas that we right. really thought about. We did a pretty deep dive into the village, right? And all the intersections and the sidewalk and ev like the surrounding area. And, um, and you, yeah, accessibility um, right. as well. Like if, if are there ramps, are they right. accessible? Should there be bump outs here to maybe slow traffic down a little bit? All of that type of stuff. But that's what will be fully studied right. as part of the grant. And looking at if any traffic calming yes. mechanisms, like traffic calming um, procedures that we can take to try to help alleviate the traffic here in the village. <laughs> um no, I'm, I'm very excited. It, it um, I, I really have a good um, sense that we are pretty um, well poised to receive this grant. Yes, we feel um, the same way. What's the timing on it? We'll have an answer when. Did I miss that? Um, I think it's around the beginning of the year that they will answer. And you're shooting for the next week deadline? Yes. 29th, yeah, everything is ready. Yeah. So, but we wanted. Yeah, we started working on this several months ago yeah. at this point. Um, we've gone through a lot of accident data, <laughs> a lot of maps and drive arounds and everything. So. Right. Um, and this is a service that we actually provide to you as a thank you for keeping us around. 
which was really <laughs> for 28 <laughs> thank you yeah, we appreciate 40 years it. or whatever it is yeah. yeah no we absolutely appreciate the help because yeah. we all know that traffic is a major concern um and anything we can do to study this and find ways to you know ease the problem um one uh, what was it um one of your other colleagues um, had told me, and one of the things that I believe to be true is that if we could just get these lights timed correctly. Yes, that's one of the things that we will look at, too, is the yes. timing of the traffic lights to make sure that they're actually in sync with each yes. other, because that also makes it safer because people aren't darting across and then another light is changing. So all of that, and that's actually the technical part where you really get into the weeds of that this. needs to yeah. happen yeah. yeah and it's very technical and i'll never claim to be an engineer because i'm not i'm the planner <laughs> so does anybody have questions for sola on this um were there other municipalities that you worked with maybe yeah, we did this uh with um Ridgefield in Connecticut last year, and they were granted $400,000. Oh. Um, and then when the grants came out this year, we started thinking about it. And I said, you know, I was at a meeting one night and there was a little incident out here in the crosswalk. Somebody got hit. And I said, I know just the place where we should be applying for a grant. So um, I don't think they were hurt that night. So <laughs> that's why I'm saying it. Uh, well, sadly, that was the inspiration. Yeah, sadly, that's the inspiration. I don't think they were hurt. Um, yes, so we have uh, put together all the technical aspects, the report, and we will be transmitting it to Kathy and Ginny and Kim tomorrow. Great. So thank you so much. And then we did, um, you know, we do have a traffic committee now. So oh, when excellent. we, yeah, when we get everything, then we'll take it another step further. Yeah. yeah. So part of putting the traffic action plan together um, is creating a task force or a committee. Yeah. So and it it's so we're off to a good start. Yeah. <laughs> You're off to a good start. You're already doing it. Yeah. So well, that's one of our biggest problems here. It's one of our biggest concerns. Yeah. So um, you know anything we can do, and I thank you so much, and thank you to your your firm too for doing this for us you know because i asked i was like how much does this cost and but since we're such longtime clients yes, um absolutely. and we really appreciate that yeah because i do think this this could help us so thank you thank you you're welcome thank you for having us put it together for you so That's it. good okay so that is safe streets with sarah brown Oh my God, we still have a lot to go. Sarah Brown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next thing on the agenda is the approval of the auction bid for the 2014 Ford Interceptor. Sold. Oh. and rock. <laughs> but what was the final? Seventy-three hundred. Seventy-three hundred was the. The bed. Yeah, I think the, the last day it was, it was covering at sixty-four. So oh, uh, people come in at the end and they, yeah, yeah. 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 it's like eBay. Yeah, <laughs> does another municipality buy it, or does it go to private sector? It could go to either. It could go to either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, usually yeah. by the time a municipality gets rid of some, <laughs> yeah, nobody wants it. Yeah, nobody else wants it. <laughs> Fire trucks would be the only thing another one to buy. Yeah. So I'm assuming Stephanie's recommending us to take this. Yeah, <laughs> she's highly you recommending it. So you either have to accept it or you have to, I think, within the first day, you have to Can't start start. with another yeah. offer. Okay. Yeah. And I, we're past that. No, I'm pretty happy with this yeah. offer, so. I'm sure. Um, need a motion? Yeah. Okay, so um, we have a motion yeah. to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Hi. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we have, um, this is the public hearing for the real property tax law uh, for the exemption, real property exemption for volunteer firemen. This is the public hearing. So I'm gonna entertain a motion to open the public hearing. 
for the volunteer firemen exemption. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the public hearing is open. Is there anyone here to speak on the um, property tax exemption for volunteer firemen? Okay, no one from the public is here to speak on that. I um, I think I speak for our entire board. We are really happy to be able to offer this to our residents. Um, we are so grateful to our volunteer firemen and women. They um, do so much for our community and we're, we are truly, truly grateful for their service. Um, this is something we can do. This is something really tangible and concrete that we can give back to them. There was a um, volunteer fireman exemption law on the books that was nowhere near as beneficial. It really wasn't um, much of a benefit at all, but this will be a 10% um, assessed value decrease on their village taxes based on the assessed value of the home. So we're really happy to offer it. Are we also gonna do the three year, like the years of service, the minimum? We did, I think, I believe we did the two years. The two or three, whatever it was. Yeah. There's a resolution that I oh, okay. have to the board. I don't okay. know if it. Oh, yeah, we right. opted in at like the, um, I believe the lowest service That's amount and the yeah. highest. I don't know what the, the, uh, we put onto the resolution. Okay. I just have to find it. Yeah. I, I knew that that was oh, it's in the public and hearings. And <laughs> oh, okay. Where is it? I don't know. Yeah, it's in public hearings. Oh, we do. Oh, look at that. Very exciting. We're fancy now. <laughs> All right. So. Two years. Oh, okay. And the resolution is on the back. It's on the back. Got it. Okay, so we went in for the 10% of the assessed value in two years of active service. Great. Yeah. And anybody with more than 20 years of service, they they just get it. And then there's more verbiage in there about a surviving spouse. Okay. It's only applicable to uh, residences, right, within the village, not business, just just oh no, this is just for residential properties residential only. Property. Residential um, only. It would be applicable on a condo, a townhouse, a single family home, a multi residential. Yeah, residential. Yeah, residential. Yeah. So I have a question. It says the first whereas has previously been amended to authorize 10% percent of the primary residents assessed value of certain volunteer firefighters and volunteer ambulances. So there was, th this is a new real property tax law yep. for 66A. There was a um, exemption historically for volunteer firemen. It only equated to about $20 of savings. So I would recommend um, when people would apply for it that they could either do it on their assessment or they could do it on their income tax. So, so my question, Oh, my question. No, no, that's okay. I thought that was your question. No, so my question is, right, we don't have a volunteer ambulance, but if a volunteer ambulance member lives in the village, but is a volunteer in another municipality, do they get the village 10%? Your village residents, and no. they, they, they volunteer, it doesn't, they don't specifically have to work in the village. Uh, so if I'm a volunteer, and I'm I don't have an issue, just so we're all clear, but if I'm a, I am live in the village and I'm a volunteer ambulance member for BVAC, mm -hmm. we're okay with the, giving the exemption. And that's fine, just so just so everybody... Yeah, that is I don't know if that's a possibility, but I'm just... I thought it was only for the firefighters that live. Yeah, I for, think this I has... thought the service had... Well, that's why I just said village. it Correct. said volunteer ambulance. I'm just... I'm not so sure. Residents of the village are yeah, fish we're talking residents. about. Only residents. And I'm not oh, sure. If I live in the village, but I'm a volunteer in some other municipality. Ambulance, somebody. but a volunteer, you know, get paid 
worker, then you get this exemption then, as well. well that's then I'll get the exemption. Right. <laughs> I thought it was only for the volunteers that serve our actual village community. That's how I understood. Oh, this is a New York State law. Yeah. It's not, so, so it it goes by New York State law, and that's uh, that's how they word it. Not where you're performing your volunteer activity. Right. I thought it was a thank you for the service they're giving us. Oh. Well, they're volunteers and they live in the village. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I but mean, I just wanted it. Could work the other way. Too. It could work the other. But I just yeah, wanted. That's true too. Again, I'm not saying I'm opposed. I just want to make sure we all understood yeah. that you know that there, it could be a lot. Of it could be, I'm assuming a volunteer be service mm -hmm. for the state of New York. Yeah, no, I believe I've administered this for people that um, served outside of outside of the yeah, jurisdiction. The okay. law is written this way. Um, they don't get it doesn't they specify. Don't get much as a volunteer. No, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just. If they hit it right, nail on the head. It could it could work in reverse yeah. for us. But just as long as, because, in my experience, right, the first one that comes in will be will, will be the one we didn't expect. Yeah, but just as long right. as we're all okay with it, I'm okay with it. I don't have an issue with it. I'm just just making us all aware. So I'm okay. I'm okay voting so, on this it. This is certain volunteer firefighters. I mean, would there be? Well, isn't that based on the amount of time they put in? Yes, that's the certain. Yeah, because they have to, in order to apply for this exemption, you have to be. Um, like approved by your fire district, they have to bring in a card. They have to bring in a letter from the fire chief. Yeah, there's a whole bit. There's a whole. Yeah. You know, they have to be in good standing. Two years. Yes. Right. All well, that's the certain. Yeah. Is that for active only? No, it's also for um, more than twenty years of active service. They still get it um, for uh, life. And then um, surviving spouse for any village official fire department member who was killed in the line of duty. Uh, I'm, you may be eligible. I'm not positive. Five years. Yeah. I, I think you qualify, huh? Life members. I think you well, ten percent tax exemption. Well, it's a, well, that's up to the assessor. <laughs> yeah, it's up to Tony. It's not me. But I'm okay. Thing. Let's go on. Yep. But this is directly out of the New York State tax law. So. Okay. That's the, okay. exactly what I took out of the law. Right. Okay. So. Um, I would like to entertain a motion. Motion. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, public hearing. yeah, the public hearing. So, okay. close the public hearing. Okay, so I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we close the public hearing. And are you ready to vote on this tonight? Yeah, yes. I am. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion that we um, pass New York State Real Property Tax Law 466A, tax exemption for volunteer firefighters for the village of Fishkill. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And, um, I have another assignment for you, Greg. Okay. <laughs> He's working that mic for you. He's handling that microphone like it's like. <laughs> so, um, I also was looking, and I noticed that the village of Pishko hasn't increased their limits for senior citizen exemption, low income senior, and also disability. So I'd like to look into, um, we'll have to decide what level we want to raise them to. So I'll do a little bit of research on that and get back with you. But I believe that the um, limits have not been looked at in, I'm going to say about 10 years. 
maybe 2017 they were adjusted last time, but I, I do feel that they should come up. So I think we need to take a look at that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe for the next meeting, um, the low income senior and also the low income disability. I will look into that. Mary. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Cause I'd like to take a look at the sliding scale for that and make it cause it's been a while. We need to make an adjustment, I think. Okay. We have to take care of our seniors. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is the software bundle that we spoke of at the last meeting for the building department. And uh, we held up on that because we only had, I think, one. What is that under now, Pam? Old business? Yeah. Oh, in the front. Yeah. Okay. That's a big. Um, the big packet that they. Oh, okay, great. Okay. I think got a, yeah. yeah, right there. Oh, okay. So this is from the building inspector, Dave Buckley. Um, and this has been a big issue lately with the building departments going um, around Municity, which is what we all kind of used, um, was going away. And they're coming out with their new version. It's very expensive. Um, there's also Edmonds, which is who we use for a lot of our other software here, like our accounting software, and Cloud Permit. Um, so Dave said his first choice was Municity, but he didn't like the price because it's $33,000. Um, I know the town of Fishkill is paying a lot. I know Beacon's paying a lot for Municity. Um, he didn't think that was justifiable. The lowest price, they would not import the data. The cloud permit system, they were the lowest price, but they weren't going to move the data over for us. So that's kind of crazy. So what he decided on was this Edmonds IPS. Um, we already use the Edmonds software. And I know that a lot of the building departments in Orange County are using it. So, you know, they seem to be happy with it. The price is not that much higher than cloud permit. Yeah. And I mean, we, um, you know, we're already with them. So that's not a bad thing. Stephanie uses them? Mm -hmm. We do, yeah. She likes them? Like yeah. So, yeah, and the, the thing is that the system that everyone was using was being phased out, which is why we're even looking at this. <laughs> so that's where we're at. And Dave, um, seen, he had told me he felt that the this Edmonds, you know, had enough of what we need here in the village. So that is his recommendation. So do we want to vote on this or do, does anybody need to? Well, I think we need to, um, yeah, because I, if we want to move forward with this, I, you know, you'll be voting for me to sign yeah. the, Agreement. Okay, yeah. So that would be, yeah. So we would have to vote on it. So I will entertain a motion that we go with the building inspector's recommendation and um, sign a contract with Edmonds IPS. So moved. Second. Is there any more discussion? Just want to make it like if everybody notices the proposal notes on page two. I just want to make sure this price is the bottom line price because it does say um, it looks like there's a few variables that could get thrown in the mix. Do we need any of these other items on the proposal notes? No. 
not to the best of my knowledge you know what i'm saying oh yeah no awesome. there's no travel needed or anything okay. i believe all of tr the training would be remote at this you know juncture no signature acceptance requests are subject to added costs so i just want to make sure none of these things aren't going to incur mm -hmm. you know is it the 9500 and then is the rest of it a la carte do we need these other things mm -hmm. let's take up with the base model my understanding was that he just needed the base model that this was the um what we got the price on was this um advanced bundle and it's all you know kind of spelled out here what we are getting for that yeah dave hasn't requested any of those yeah no and he did um test them all so and i mean to the best of my knowledge we haven't had any issues with Edmonds, you know with any other software issues for other departments So two options. We can vote on it or we can have Dave take a look at those notes and give us a, a yay or nay. I mean, it, just doesn't delete, it just doesn't state how much right. more those items are. So we can get those answers from Dave, table this till next month, or do we have to sign it now? Well, I don't know how much time do we have. When does this current program, when does the city expire? I mean, I think... Um... I don't know when the comfortable with as is. Um, I don't. I mean, if you want to table it and find that out, I'm okay with that. Um, and I think that's in your. Point. I've got to go with just for me. Yeah, I'm going to follow Dave's lead. He did. He did the testing. He liked it. It's a yeah. system that we use already in house with Stephanie and Ginny. Um, and Ginny. Mm -hmm. And the way the way I'm reading it, the live remote implementation and training is included. So if he needs, if he wants on site, as painless as possible, then he'd have to probably come back to us. But quota data conversion, scope of work based on typical projects. So yeah, yeah, it looks that, like alternate conversions is priced separately and yeah. optional POS hardware upon request. So then these are all included. Not, not all of them, but all of some them. of them are, some right? Of them. It was so, just a couple of them that yeah. if he doesn't need them, then then that's fine. Like the, the first one is certainly included. Right. Second one is not. Right. The quote. There's data conversion, scope of work based on typical projects. I would have to think the village is yeah. probably within <laughs> within that scope. Yeah, I think Dave would have said alternate conversion is not. Of those yeah, and uh, 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 optional POS hardware. I don't think Dave uses that. Um, so uh, I'm okay moving forward. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So I'll entertain a motion then that we. Nope. I think we did a motion. Did I? I? That's okay. just <laughs> oh, that was the discussion. That was the discussion. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, is there any more discussion? Are we good? Okay. All right. So um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. That will be software. Do Okay, panic buttons from Doyle Security. We spoke about that at the last meeting as well. Here is the um, breakdown of the alarm equipment. These are for the panic buttons. 
that I think are definitely needed. Um, and we're not in compliance without them. So, yeah. These are wearable buttons. Yes, right? they are. They're wearable, they're movable. Um, somebody could, you know, put it on their person or they could put it on their desk or, you know, whatever is um, comfortable for that. But I, I'm, I really think this is a good thing. Now, does it trigger to our police department or? Well, it goes to Doyle and then they then do the calls from there. Right, Glenn? Will contact state police, state police dispatch. Right. They call me a lot <laughs> at night. <laughs> yeah. And what was the price on this? Twenty-four forty-five. Okay. Okay. Good. With the thirty dollars per month. Right. right. Wow, the current rate we were paying is six thirty-six. We really were grandfathered in, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, are we ready to move forward on this? I'll entertain a motion that we purchase the um, that we we agree to the add-on to our already existing security contract to allow for the panic buttons. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. That's going to be good. Let me get that done. Okay. And now we are going to talk about the amended bond resolution for the water system project. Do you need the microphone? <laughs> You're gonna pass the baton. <laughs> pass, pass the baton here. Yeah, you don't want to let it go. <laughs> so um, several years ago, we um, made an agreement with EFC uh, to fund our water project. We got a grant for a uh, million dollars, and but the water project has since expanded. So EFC wants to know: Are we moving forward? And so what you, I think Greg prepared, actually the bond council prepared that resolution to, uh, to basically move forward. It doesn't mean we have to borrow all of that money. It just means it'll be available to us if we need it. Um, the tank project involving the tank, um, there's still some things to iron out, but that's, what we think we need to complete that the, the tank project we still need to move forward with the other end of the project which we've already started three years ago now um with the redrilling of well two and four and bringing eight online um so that's that's it i don't know if you have any questions So, like we really we originally did a 2.2 .2 in 2019, mm -hmm. and then we're bringing in 11,649. 11 million. 11 million. Mm -hmm. So, can you give? So, the, the only cost is to build a one gallon storage tank. The original, the original scope was to. Um, we rotate the million gallon tank we have on Round Hill. Um, we we try and over find out we cannot do that. We cannot maintain the instantaneous demand that the system requires. So to redo that, we actually have to take it offline completely, and we can't do that unless we build another tank. That tank. The existing Iron Hill tank was built in 1984. It's never been painted on the inside. It's relatively good, but we're trying to build it so we can go back and do that tank. And, you know, it's beneficial in the future to have you know two million gallons worth of storage, especially because where that tank would be located, it would facilitate some of the water out to the East Fishkill corridor through the town of Fishkill. 
as a joint venture kind of thing. And it might even help the Dutchess Park water in the future. So, you know, just to, like we were talking about earlier, we have contractual agreements with the City of Beacon, Town of Wappingers, Town of Fishkill, Chelsea Ridge Apartments, and, you know, we're just trying to do the best we can to maintain resiliency in our system. And this is the next natural step towards doing that. Well, I don't know if you have any other questions. Yeah, we just um, recently in the last couple of years signed, uh, we renewed our water contract with the city of Beacon. It's a 40 year contract. Right. We're contractually obligated to give them 1.2 million gallons a day mm -hmm. if they need it. They have to buy 200,000 gallons of water a day whether they use it or not. But they, they do use it. They don't use it 200,000 gallons a day. They may not use the water for three quarters and then when the reservoirs turn and it's easier to use our water instead of taking their water. But that contract goes to 1.5 once we get these improvements right. online. So, Does it change from 200? Does the 200 go up? Also? No, that stays the same. And this money, do you have to use it within a certain time frame or is it always available? It's available for the movie if we don't get it all signed, sealed, and delivered. The problem is, is that the state health departments and the DEC have been kind of in, in limbo in getting these things approved. It took us almost two years since the date we did the final 72-hour um, uh, pump test down there on well two and four before they even got back to us and said, oh, yeah, okay, you can take the water, you know, after they reviewed the 600-page report that was sent to them. Um, that's the state, right? That's the state. Well, that, 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 that's, that's, the that's, the that's actually that's the DEC <laughs> taken because we got to go through the DEC and get it approved by the DOH state level. Um, and some things have changed too in the time frame. The level of disinfection, if you will, has increased. So now all of a sudden we were just giving it chlorine. Now it looks like we're going to be treating with UV. And, you know, we're trying to fit that into the building and, and everything else. So it, it's funny, you know, you, you, you design something and plan for current regulations. And then by the time you get that thing and approved, they've changed the regulations. So I think Anthony could attest to that. Um, so that's why we're looking, we don't have to take this money, but you know, it, it, it's, it, it's relatively cheap. One of the things we did talk about too was, is now that this is an added cost to us, it might be able to get into that hardship thing like we did with the sewer plant and get it at the 0% 0 fi zero financing. Right. Where the sewer plant, you know, we're, we bought all that money and we're not, not paying any interest on it, you know? Right. So. So that was a win. That's not guaranteed, but because we because we have to do one thing because the other thing doesn't work, right. it's, it's we're in a good position. In a good position, right? right. Exactly. Right. So, uh, so that's what I was looking for tonight to get that resolution. Just and this is just more paperwork for EFC. They they can't move forward and saying well, we're going to give you the money if you don't have a resolution that the board agrees that we're going to move forward with these things. They're only, at the end of the day, they're only going to give you um, what we spent, you know, or, or you or need, so to speak. So this is just authorizing us to go out. Doesn't mean we have to. Exactly. <laughs> it's just paperwork, basically. Me and Stephanie have been working, figuring out, because there's all kinds of other criteria, you know, the... We have to update all our new information, our uh, EDUs, the uh, equivalent, what is it, the dwelling units uh, mm -hmm. based on our gallonage that we use and things like that. So something we've been working on and Delaware has been working on it as well. So. Yeah, and I mean, you know, this, like you said, it's the next logical step. I mean, our infrastructure is really important, you know, to the village to um you know our um our survival you know and um being you know um fiscally sound 
you know, it is, it is one of the best assets the village has, yeah. you know, monetarily, especially right. being that we do sell water to so many other different municipalities, but it's getting late, you know, it's getting late. It's officially my bedtime, I think. So yeah, this would just put this in place for if and when we need it. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay, this is a roll call vote. So, um, So I'll entertain a motion that we amend our bond resolution for our water project. And um, let's see, the ma estimated maximum cost of said improvement has increased and is now $13,849,270. So I'll entertain a motion to sign this agreement. Oh, I'm sorry? Adopt and adopt the bond resolution. But we'll have a um, we'll have the clerk call a roll call vote. Mayor Martin? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. Okay. Um, and then the roll call vote. Yep. Mayor Martin? Aye. Trustee Mitchell? Aye. Trustee Ruggiero? Aye. Trustee Mitchell? Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank Aye. you, Dave. I'm going to have to fill in all that information. Who will vote for the resolution? Nick? I, sec I second it. Yeah. A little bit and uh, in the second step. Okay. All right, thank you. And now we have a special guest with us tonight. I'm sorry, you had to wait till the very end. <laughs> Still with us? Yes. It's actually, it's, uh, I've been coming to Fishkill for 23 years. You have been a great client of Delaware Engineering and I've been in this meeting twice over that and I appreciate being here and seeing how you conduct business and the kind of issues you're talking about and they're serious issues and um, I enjoy it so thank you for having me um we were, did you want to start with this Dave if you want I'll start giving that in if they have questions so there's two things in front of us in front of you tonight one is the change order to kind of close out the wastewater treatment plant upgrade that was going on. Um, if you look, I, there's a little, it gives you a breakdown of the numbers. Um, so we're looking for a change order for Kubrecki um, in the order of $391,645.41. Or not to exceed them, but those are down on the bottom. And there's a hundred thousand dollar credit for not using the media. We got it from the DMC that we did not have to use that. So makes Paul's job easier in the end. Would you agree with that, Paul? I have discussed a lot of these uh, costs. Um, with uh, several of you here, and I've gave a tour to Trustee Ann Machado over there. I'm like, sorry if I butchered your last name, Machado. Machado, there you go. Um, Anthony, I think I went over with you last month. I don't know if you need a refresher course or not, but and I just went over early with Nick a little bit. 
on the cost. If anybody has any questions about that. If numbers can go lower, they will not go higher. Okay. They will not go higher. No, about the increase or not. Well, the big ticket on the weather is um, that $61,000. Um, yeah, the yeah the EQ box walkway. It's more of an accessibility to an area that kind of was problematic. Um, we feel maybe we could do a lot better on that place if we do it in house. I think that sixty one thousand dollars was was a number by Kubrecki, and for all intents purposes, Kubrecki's done with exception of some punch items. But I don't think I think they would rather just move on to another bigger project and not be dealing with this little thing. So we're gonna do that in house. So we're into the contractor at a reduced much reduced rate. Mm -hmm. For us to say, oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to call it a yeah, price yeah, yeah. Holder, but it's yeah, it's a not to exceed thing. thing. Right. Most of the things on the item do have value. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the changes were made to make the project better and they added value to the end product. Um, some of them are, some of them are right at the top was the additional sludge hauling that we did to reduce the odors that were yeah. problematic. Um, it was just a lot easier to try to start managing that sludge to haul it away. And, and that almost doubled the original budget of that. And part of the reason why it, it doubled it was also because the project did take so long because I know you guys don't want to hear it, but availability and and uh, the time it took because of COVID. Yeah, it really did. Um, so, you know, the, the, the project lasted almost a year, well, it did a year that it was supposed to originally. So that's why it just took longer to get all that done. So, let me try to answer any other questions you may have about the the, um, the sludge was, um, you know, we had so many people that were really residents that were really affected by the odor. It was a terrible problem. Yeah, we had probably more people here than we've ever had. Yeah, you know, so, right, you know, absolutely. There was, you know, there was one time, but in the springtime, when people wants to go to the restaurant, <laughs> or to go to the beast, or even open their window. <laughs> so that was more like it. What? What's our total? The total is five, six five. 41. That's the Kubrecki change order. Yeah. That would be the most it would be. So what's the 556? So the total pending change orders total, right, is five total is 556, 645, 41. All, is that what plus you? Plus you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's all in, right? That's that's all in the five C right. This was the Kubrecki change for 391. Right, but we're voting on all of it now. No, well, there was two. Well, I was I voted to the change order for Quebecy and the amendment to the contract for Delaware. It's kind of two separate things. But we have to vote on it. Right, well, yeah, of course, of course. Right. So, but so the on the first page, remaining construction activities, the three bullets, and then on the fourth one. So all of that is included in your chart down below. Yeah. Whether it's you or Kubrecki, right? Yeah, yeah. Whether it's Delaware or, well, actually, it's probably all Kubrecki, right? So, so Kubrecki. it's all Kubrecki. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. So, right. If we have separate data, separate document, change order for Delaware engineering for construction inspection, and then engineering during that construction inspection time, essentially eight months. But that's, that's, that's in the 165. I see. All of them. That's, that's the two correct. things you just described. That's correct. Okay. And we've made a commitment to Dave to call to the board that that's it. Oops, sorry. And 391 is max. That's the max to Kubrecki. Right. Could be lower. 
not to exceed. It's going to go low. There's a box of walkway we're not going to do. Yeah. And the retainage of 844K, mm -hmm. that doesn't pay for the 391. No, sooner or later, Kubricki will get their retainage. Yeah. But it's it's leveraged to make sure they do like little punch items right, that are on until the until right. we're right. satisfied. Exactly. Right. So Nick, what are you saying we're not doing? The box uh, the, the box walk, we're gonna do it, but we will get it at a better price. Better price. So the the walkway to the box. Right. right. 61 Sixty-one K. Sixty one bags. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whether that's in house or another contractor, we will come up. Right. If we can get it done for twenty thousand, then that three ninety one would be forty thousand dollars less. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there anything else on this list that we can have done in house or by another contractor to bring the price down? Or is that the only line item that sixty one k for the walk box walk with? No, that's that's it. You know the pricing, Nick, it's yeah. reasonable price. Okay, I just, you know, while we're on the subject of saving yeah. money, let's... And this work has mostly been done already. Yes. Yeah. 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 The last bit. Right. So this started, what, like, about five years ago, right? Well, it started a long time ago in the design and the engineering part and the, getting approvals from the DEC and DEP and uh, so... Right, and the big the holdup was COVID, of course. Exactly. We couldn't get... Any high voltage stuff, 460 voltage. No, I just, remember you had electricians right. making things. And that was the, uh, let's see. Yeah, that was the uh, the Q tank, the electrical box needed to power. So all that was basically temporarily running the phone, and it, we had started. We took things apart, couldn't get parts. How to wake up temporary stuff to keep it going, keep the process moving, try to, you know. So at the end of the day, that $15,000 that we spent for that is, there's no inherent value left at that, but it was the cost of doing business, so to speak. So the only thing not completed, what, what's not completed on this list? Other than the walk Um. The, the remaining construction activity. Uh, you've got for skater costs. Um, any little bugs will have to be worked out to put that in there as a not to exceed. Um, oh, can you give me an update on that? Or do you think it, it's not finished? But most of it, most of the same, but they're kind of working out little kinks. It's kind of a lot of software stuff. So that is in there to, you know, make it, make it, make it happen. So that could be lower. It could be lower. Could be lower. And then, yeah. So you got the skin cost. The, um, there was a valve. In between. It was two. Well, that separates the two. And there's a valve that is broken in the off position. And that needs to be replaced. And that's going to be a big job. That's something we do not want to do in house or, or anything even close to that. Um, if you're going to have to drain both sides of the wet well. And um, it's actually it's concrete wood, it's a big vault. And they have to go in and take that valve out. It was when they did the wet well um, 15 years ago. But for some reason, it's broken in the off position right now. So we need to make that so the wet well acts as one unit and all the pumps work as one. Right now, it's isolated. So there's two pumps on one side and two pumps on the other. And it doesn't, when it comes on, and then the other one comes on, and it sends too much flow instead of just going up and down. That's the $55,000. Yeah. That's how to exceed kind of. But it, it's involved in this bypass pumping and everything involved. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it's a very big job. Yeah. So is there a chance it could exceed that number? We don't think so. I think they gave us a high number because of that. Um, the, the control changes that you want. Oops. 
haven't been done yet. We've uh, working on a design concept, and that's a price that we put on it that we're confident we can be on. You know, that that's the maximum price. That's all on that. Seventy-five hundred. And then we're down to the sixty-one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which we already talked right. about. Right. I think we might be able to shave down. Right. And everything above that is already been completed. Yes. Those are tasks that have been done. Exactly. Yeah. And the updates, the paving, mm -hmm. all that. It's been a long haul. <laughs> it, yes. Right? Yep. And uh, um, it, I I got to give credit to Paul. Um, that job was a tough job to oversee and make sure it got done. Yes. And him and his guys. I mean, it's one thing when you go to a plant on a brand new piece of land, and there's nothing in the way. <laughs> but he had to treat the sewage that came in the way without. You know, while they were working on it and running on a half a system, you know. So, you know, in spite of everything, there may be some misgivings that some people have had. You have a good product in it, and in the end of the day, it's a win win. Um, the original plant was built in '74, and it was a package plant. Back then, the um, EPA came and they wanted places to put in sewer systems. It was part of the clean water back, back then during Nixon's deal. And um, it had a 25-year life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Do the math. 1974, it's 2024. It's got a red pole that kept it going all those years. And so... We're very grateful. And I, I know that this... Um, just, I've been here, you know, only under you know just over three years and this was such a huge undertaking that was already going on um when we were elected onto the board and you know there's been trials and tribulations all the way through but i really commend you paul um and your staff that you know you kept everything running and you kept everything going under like some really difficult circumstances with supply chain issues and just all the other, you know, things that go along with a construction project of this magnitude. So we're very grateful to you and your staff and also to you, Dave, for, you know, assisting kind of, you know, helping us understand things as we go along. Like this is not my area of expertise. <laughs> so, um, yes, we're, we're very grateful to all of you for helping us through this process. And you know, for helping us to improve again our infrastructure for the residents of the village. So thank you. It's you a long, very long proud. term investment that's going to pay off. You so. should be very proud, both of you, of your accomplishments because we, I believe, really have a system now that's second to none. And thank you. Thank nice you job, for guys. all the work. Let me ask you, what was tougher, that job or sitting here for three hours? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cold cabin, that's the hardest thing, trying to keep it running. Yeah. yeah. And during the flood, also. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. We didn't talk about that. There's <laughs> at least two floods. Yeah. And only having half, an, half a plant operating. Right. Right. And what the flood means is not just inaccessible to everything, but the fact that you've got tremendous amounts of water coming into your system that you're trying to treat. Yes. You know. So that's that's that. Do you want to vote on approving the change order for Kubrecki, or do you want to, me to talk about Delaware Engineering's added costs and added engineering, or do you want John to talk about that? Um, part of, a lot of the problems that we had here was like when we couldn't get parts, what do we do? We got to call the electrical engineer and say, hey, can we run a little transformer to run this and do this and can we get a used control panel that will that be adequate so we don't burn up any equipment that we may have and things like that and was, and and the added inspection cost because the job went a year extra um delaware is looking for the the hundred and sixty five thousand dollars added to their contract that's a that's a hard number right john uh it's uh not that's it 
once he pays that, it's once we pay that, they're done with that part of that that process. So, Greg, are we better off separating the two pieces? Yeah. Well, the second yeah. Thank you. So let me just. So in final, I think you've got an amendment to owner engineer amendment number two. Um, the amendment is for one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. So I would be looking to get a motion to approve um, the change and the amendment to the amendment. Oh, we're going to do one at a time now. So you're asking us to do a resolution for amendment number two. Yeah, number two. Oh, that's what you're saying too. I thought we were putting both together. I don't know. I'm trying to confuse. Well, no, no, well, that's easily done. So in the end, we have one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. That'll make the engineering whole, and we move on to bigger and better things. There's a motion. Anthony made a motion. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. And then the good lucky change order. And change order number four, right? You've got that? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm flipping through these pages and they all look the same. Yeah, it's Please, I can't even find it. Do you have it in front of you, Mary? Increase to the change order of three ninety one six forty five and forty one cents. Right, change order four, correct? Okay, so I will entertain a motion for um, change order number four for the Kabricki Construction Company for the Village of Pishko wastewater treatment uh, system upgrades that. Uh, we allow for the change order increase of 391, 645. Not to exceed. Not, not to exceed. Right. 691,645 dollars and 41 cents. It's, it's 391. 391. 391. 41. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> not, not to exceed. Okay. Second. Okay, is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, believe me, it uh, makes me happy that we're putting this to behind us <laughs> so I can move forward. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you guys for hanging with us. Yeah, thank you so much. Increase to what the overall project okay. was. So you have them in there if you want to sign. Um, is there any other discussion? Anything? Any trustees? Anything? I had a couple items. That's um, so just a real quick couple items. Just uh, the county fair starts tomorrow. So uh, the county will have a number of resources there. But just in general, it's always a good fun activity. Also, uh, just, in, just as a public service announcement, if you haven't seen, so um, the county passed a resolution to separate the current department of behavioral and community health into three departments now oh. so we're a health department there's a new commissioner for mental health and then uh adam uh roche has been elevated he's current director but he's a kind of been elevated to um the veterans has been separated out and is now direct report to uh, the county executive Okay. So we'll have three. So there's a veterans. There's a vet. There always was a veterans right. service, but they had reported to me. Now they're a okay. separate separate uh, division that reports directly to the county executive. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the health department, which is your traditional um, environmental. You know, just don't get rid of me. Um, there's uh, we'll <laughs> have uh, weights and measures. We still have. We have our CDC, our nursing division, uh, and our um, EI preschool is still under us. And then mental health is all the, the mental health services at 230 North Road. Um, 
So that's all happened in the last few days. <laughs> and then just uh, if you go to the library website, there's a lot of great fun activities coming up. So next week is our Blodgett Day, which has always been called our, um, that'll be next uh, Wednesday the 28th from 2 to 6. That's our end of year carnival. So that's at it's Sarah Taylor's. It's a Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> that threw me off too. I was like, Wednesday? <laughs> Uh, what happened last year, she kind of bumped into um, the county fair, so she was trying to, and then previously, the year before, I think she had it on Labor Day, so she was trying to fit it in. Well, kids are up, I'm yeah. And then, uh, actually, and then, then the following, uh, that's that Friday, 8.30, I'm sorry, on August 30th at 6.30, it's the last luau. Um, so she has a number of great fun activities coming up in the next couple of weeks. And then in September, she's trying a lot of new different things. Um, she'll have, uh, if you look on the calendar, I'll just read them off, but there's like tea time. And then she's also going to have how to recycle. And if you're doing it right, so she'll have those programs. Mm -hmm. Also be having coffee with a cop. And she's going to also be doing a gun safety course. Um, Bobbing for Donuts, which I think I'll go to that one. That sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> um, in the fall is Hot Cider. And um, actually, one of the big ones is not only the jewelry that she has, but also Parents' Night Out. That's always yes. a big yes. activity. that's been a hit. Um, so go to the website. There's a lot of good things. Um, she's trying to really up her... Well, she does a good job of programming and for trying to offer a lot of the different programs that the community is looking for. Right. That's and I think the Books for Badges program is still ongoing, and they just announced a few more dates for that, which is a great program. And thank you, Glenn, for allowing our officers to participate in that. It's when um, the officers from the town and the village go to the library, and they have story time with the kids. And they have some crafts and goodie bags. And it's a really nice um, environment for kids to, you know, get to know each other, but also to um, interact with law enforcement and uh, po really positive uh, venue. So. We had some successful trivia night last night. Yes, yes, library. yes. Fundraiser for the library. Uh, yep, yes. yes. Um, they have a friends group and they're doing some good, you know, good activity. Good. I know they have a book sale coming up yep. the friends group they have a book sale um so they're actually looking for volunteers they mentioned that so that's another volunteer opportunity the uh friends of the blodgett library so did you have anything else? um just a couple of things um just worth mentioning the crosswalk sign i know some residents are concerned yeah. the one by carrie by the post office has not been working well, i'm going <laughs> yeah. Okay. Since then, we fixed it. Okay. And we have we put a used battery in it, and um, it was working good. But then it's a tree that's blocking. We adjusted the solar panel. But today we're putting we ordered fresh batteries. That we did. Okay. 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 So Thank you. So there was there's a charge battery in it that hopefully will last a little bit. Okay. But I didn't mention that. It's, um, it's, it's the one still working. It's a that got hit too, right? <laughs> that one got hit too, right? <laughs> um, I would like to see a community board similar to what we had at the park. I know we discussed it. I don't know if there's a, if there's room for extra language in that case that we had, or if we can add another case for community events i'm not sure i mean the one at the park is beautiful i'm just yeah. not sure how much traction or visibility well they, they get a lot of people down there that was an eagle scout project right. um yeah. done by one of the casters <laughs> yeah so um i don't know that's just great information that's down there I just wish yeah julie from the library actually maintains that for us sure, so does. she keeps it very you know nice well, and yeah, yeah colorful <laughs> and yeah, so, okay, that's a good thought, and we'll have to see where we could put that, if okay. possible. Yeah. yeah. The cat would go put that together. Now. Yeah, Casper. Casper. Uh-uh. No, we, um, I think it was, yeah, Casper. Yep. <laughs> Yvonne. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing I was wondering, and Nick, I know you're the business liaison, has the village ever thought about like a first Friday, second Saturday, some sort of a 
I mentioned Thank that to my wife two weeks ago. Could you now? Yes, and I said we should have a fish kill Friday. You should I love that. Yeah, just kind of map it out how we can make that work. No, no street needs to be closed, Glenn. Thank you. So <laughs> great. Um, but yeah, I mean, and if you want to talk more about it, I can reach out to you this week. Sure. Let's let's start uh, the ball rolling on that. That's yeah, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. And another idea I had for the park, and I don't know if it's ever been. We used to have a farm market. Yes. But um, I did reach out to New York State Agriculture and got some information about farm markets. I thought the park might be a nice spot to do that, that would be moving lovely. forward. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I just thought we'd just get the idea out there now so we can go through the steps if anybody thought that would be a good idea. I love that it would idea. keep the traffic off Main Street. It's a different, it's a destination. It increases yeah. our park. And we've got a pavilion to keep merchants. I so, think it's so. great. I love it. Um, I could even put you in touch with the people who run the Beacon Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. Um, we did have a farmer's market years ago. It was during the week, yeah. which I kind of, you know, like, and then it kind of, yeah, it got hot. this is yeah. like nice shady over there. I think it would be wonderful. I would love to work on that with you. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. Everybody like that idea. Oh, yeah. I think it's okay. great. Yeah. Good. Yay. Anything else? Not good. Do you have anything next? Does anybody from, yes. Hans. Yeah. When you were talking about the, uh, Putting on the uh, taxes, well, you put under your tax mm -hmm. bill. Yep. I think you should also send up a notice of that, uh, just because you're, say, a $200. They have a $200 water sewer bill. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'm not going to pay it. Mm -hmm. So I'll just add, I'm not going to worry about it. And I'll, well, come my tax time, I'll pay it then. But you also ought to realize that if you don't pay at a certain time, there's penalties involved. Right. Well, yeah, it would definitely incur the penalties. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you bring it right out and say, hey, you know, instead of a $200 water bill, you're allowed to let them put a $2,000 water bill by the end of the year. But, I mean, the penalties are also clearly stated on the bill, and some people either don't notice it or... You know, well, I, that's just it. I mean, I mean, there could be verbiage, I think, in the letter, maybe that we send out with people yeah, to right. that effect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody? Yes. Thank you. Can't see anymore. Uh, Louise is Daniele. I just wanted to read something that I wrote while I was sitting here. This is a pretty long meeting. You guys almost topped the town's meetings. Um, I was disappointed to see the lack of process on the planning board appointment. First come, first serve instead of qualified applicants. It looks more like your friend who ran for trustee and lost can be appointed first, and then we'll make a process. If you want the village to move forward, you need to stop the same old, same old and create policy and follow it as suggested by Trustee Machado. Um, as far as the, the water billing, I think that's a great idea that you're finally catching up with that. Um, I think maybe if you just mail something to those people so they know exactly what it is and they can pay it first, that's what the town does. Some people do. Um, otherwise, advise them that it'll be attached to, the, uh, to their taxes. Some people just don't realize that, like you said, a lot of people back in the day did it because it was a tax advantage, and then I think it stopped. So, but uh, I think it's great that you're finally catching up with uh, certain people. That will be great to get get your money back from the from those people. Thank you. That's it. Anyone else? All right. Anything else? Nothing. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Did somebody make the motion? You gotta make it. Oh, so. move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs>